So this is another sorter. Wow. Good job, Dylan. You're running out of content already, are ya? Yes, but that's besides the point. This is a sorter. And it's based on a conversation we had I had with my chat with during Luigi's Mansion on which characters would make a good roommate. And the discussion went on for quite a while, and I kind of really thought about it. I was like, oh, that could be fun to do a sorter on. So here are the rules, I suppose. Uh, and I'm making rules for something like this. I guess the general rule of thumb is like the idea is you have to, you know, you have to have you have to be a roommate to a character. And you got to weigh the positives and you got to weigh the negatives. So obviously, things like what they do and if they're able to pay rent, right? So things like that. I want a character. I think a good roommate is one who is, you know, respects the space you both live in and pays their half of the fucking bill. That's the best roommate I could ask for. How many total characters do you think could do that? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Um, there's also... What do you call it? There's also the element of, like, relationships. Where you gotta assume... You need to assume that the characters... It's a completely flat relationship. So if you say dumb shit, like, I want to hang out with this character because I like them. Remember, they don't know who the fuck you are. So you can't just be like that. You gotta be ready, right? You gotta be ready and willing to live with their bullshit. Just because you like them ain't gonna cut it. I would not live anywhere near Suika. Alright? Not a fucking chance. But I love Suika. Come on now. Thank you, Demo, for getting me to sub. You gotta, you gotta think about this. You gotta weigh the pros and the cons. You can love a character, but do you really love them enough to tolerate their bullshit? And they definitely don't hold as much affection towards you as you do them, because they don't know who the fuck you are. Alright? Also, it's kind of weird that you know more about them as well, so you gotta understand how to behave yourself. Alright? That's the general idea. As for the housing in question, it could be whatever you really think of, but I guess a r most roommate situations I assume are sharing an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment, so that's kind of the basis of what everything I'm going to be saying. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily restrict to that. Yes, I made all of these rules because, well, I don't know why. It's just, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get this accurate, that's all. So let's begin. The purest sea and sky. Hold on. That should be good. I've hit the random button. Are we ready to begin, chat? Ready, set, go. Wow. Okay. So. I would argue that this is the equivalent of living with your landlord. So. <laughs> How do you even begin on this one? Mm. So, Megamoose is the boss of the Tengu, and Kaneko is the boss of the of the Moria Shrine. Now, let's think of this in terms of Gensokyo. If you're rooming with Megamoose, you're probably on the mountain. Same deal with Kaneko, right? If you think of this in terms of the real world, then you have to deal with both of these personalities, because both of these characters are very much going to be overbearing presences in your life. The question is, which one do you think you could deal with? Kanago would be a, a Kanago would be a fucking cult leader, man. And Megumu Megumu would probably do something with journalism if you take Tengu Information Society and try to put it into integrate it into the real world. So either way, both of these characters are rough. Now, I don't want to be a part of no cult. I don't want to live with a sassy journalist. Hmm. <laughs> Tengo. I don't know. I think... I don't know. There's really not much about Megumu that really exists and knowledge-wise, yeah. But she is boss Tengu. I don't think either one of these is good. Tie? I can't tie. <laughs> Journalism can make money, not as much as a cult. <laughs> I mean, she wouldn't. She wouldn't. 
She would, she wouldn't be a cult leader, but she would definitely work with shrines and stuff because she's a god, right? I don't know. I think your business would be cleaner if you were if you were with Kaneko. I also think Kaneko would respect the authority of the household because she lives with Suiko as well. You know what? If she if she she can pay the bills and I can just do whatever, then it sounds good to me. I'm gonna go with Kaneko. Cause Kaneko can handle everything. Cause that's what she does. She handles everything. All I have to do is do some grunt work for her and we're good to go. Oh no. Now... This right here... Is what we call being a third wheel. How the fuck am I supposed to live with her? When I wake up in the morning and I open the windows and Unzan's just staring in there. It's like, oh good morning Unzan. <laughs> what am I supposed to do about that? Does Unsan pay rent? He's a giant cloud monster! What do I- Oh, you know what? Unzan can shapeshift. Did you know that? Unzan can actually shapeshift. And I don't know what Ichiden does. <laughs> Satono... Unzan is on the list separately. Yes, he is, but his benefits come with each of them because these two are never separated no matter what. So Unzan would always be around the premises even if he didn't necessarily live like in there. I don't know what each of them does, honestly, for the Myoden Temple. As far as I know, she's a loiterer. She doesn't really have a job. And Satono... I mean, Satono just invites danger because Okina exists. She's up 9 to 5 dancing. That's it. Honestly, I'd rather live with Big Punch Cloud because that is that is some sick security that no one would ever be able to explain. I tried to break into this house and I got, I got fucking punched by a giant cloud. Like, who's gonna believe that? Like, oh, quick, Unzan, the police are here. Can you just, like, float up to the sky and be a cloud for a little bit? <laughs> like, what? You can't- it's- it's- it's unbreakable defense. But again, I don't really know what each of it does, so... I wouldn't call her dead weight, because that's mean. But I'm sure she has some kind of role that she could fulfill. She looks like a monk, or not a monk, a nun. Maybe she'll get a job at a church. I'm going with each of them, though. Now, would you rather wi live with Meta or <laughs> Genji? Pros, turtle, cons, where are the cons? I'm not seeing them. Does Genji need water to live? Can Genji pay rent? Well, he is a turtle, so I don't think so. Meta is a samurai, but she seems power hungry. She might be a little bit dangerous. She might also not be home very much because she's out perfecting the blade. You know what? I would rather live with Genji. Wait, chat. Genji, Gen Genji's hygienic. Do turtles smell bad? This is an important question. Hygiene is not really an issue with any character because I assume they all uh, there's no hygiene issues. But I don't know how turtles smell. How do turtle pay rent? Uh, he doesn't pay rent. But he also like, he also like lives in my bathtub. He lives in my bathtub, or I buy him a little pool in the side of the room, so he doesn't actually take a two-bedroom apartment. Which means Genji is more like a pet. Don't tell him I said that, though. Genji is more like a pet than a roommate. That would still be preferable to living with Meta. Genji gets the tub, and Waggy. They both get the tub. Can't live with them both. He's a pet on the lease. Yeah. Genji's retired, so you wouldn't really be able to do much. He'd have a lot of stories. But I guess it would be kind of like living with your grandpa, huh? But he's a turtle. I don't know. 
I'm, all I'm doing is weighing the positives of Genji. Can't, can't Genji fly? Everyone can fly, though. And if... And, like... You know, if you want to put it in real-world perspective, if you were flying on a turtle, there'd be some problems. There'd be some serious problems. Also, sitting on a turtle's back and flying? A little scary, don't you think? What happens if you fall? You know what? Chat, I think I would rather live with Meta. Because even though I don't know much about Meta, if she is a warrior, she may have honor. And by honor, I mean... She'll clean up after herself. She's not a goddamn slob. Alright? Now I can deal with... I can deal with that. Just do your... Do your dishes. Do your own laundry. Pay your own rent. You can do whatever the fuck you want in your own room. It's your room. Alright, I'll be real with you. I would never in a million years want to live with Cherno. I would rather live the with the lady whose fashion sense is stuck in the uh, 100 years ago, wears sick hats, and carries around a giant scythe. She's, she's security. She can work security detail. However, I have to wonder if anyone will actually hire her, given her, uh, you know, her outfit. But I would trust her with my place, but I wouldn't pay her for it. I would just assume she'd be able to protect- I would like to live with a gatekeeper because the gatekeepers would be able to protect their own house, right? Even if- even if someone broke in and they were like, Oh, don't worry, I'm just stealing from that guy's room. They'd be like, get the fuck out of my house, right? They're not gonna sit there and let you walk into my room and take my shit. On the other hand... Cherno is Cherno, right? Cherno doesn't have a job. Cherno's not gonna pay rent. Cherno's not gonna clean him up after herself. I'm gonna have to put her in the fucking tub half the time, I bet. And she also is going to require no heat because if I put the heat up, she will melt. <laughs> she's free AC in the summer. Yeah, and she's unwelcome AC in the winter. <laughs> she would have... She would be very troubling. You would have to be very self-sufficient. If you could- if you could cover the entire rent on your own without her help, then sure. But as far as I see it, living with a fairy would be like the equivalent of raising a child. You look after them, and this one's a brat, so it's not gonna clean up after itself. Couldn't do it. And pranks. Pranks 24-7. I would rather live with Ellie. Alright, now, hold on there. Alright? I know what you're thinking. The great catfish? That's another one in the tub. But he's he's too big for that. Curry is the great catfish. However, I would never be able to explain to anyone why there's a giant catfish living in the room next door. So, I would rather live with the magical fairy girl with the pointy ears. Because she would be easier to explain in comparison. She's still not easy to explain. But it's a lot easier to explain than a catfish. <laughs> Ellie's a vampire, right? I think she's a vampire. She knows magic, I guess. But I don't know. No, the catfish is fucking huge. I mean, Ellie's huge and tall one, but so is Mima. Every character is huge when they're a boss, but they shrink down. But the catfish is actually huge in the fighting game standards. Thinking of Kudami? I know Kudami's a vampire, but I don't know what Ellie is. She's a Makai resident, and she has a Joestar tattoo, or birthmark, and she has a magical, a magical wand. I don't know why I think she's a vampire, but I don't really know what she is. She's a devil? Oh. Alright, well, as long as she's a nice devil, I guess. <laughs> hey, if she's capable of magic, she can do magic shows. You know, it's just if a blood trail happens and it links back to me, I didn't do nothing. 
Rengar or Kassen, that is not even a contest. That's really not a contest. <laughs> Kassen? No. Why would you... You know how Kassen operates, right? Kassen is going to have a bunch of pets. She's going to take in strays. She doesn't have an actual job. And she's going to lecture you about being better. She's basically a fucking hippie. Alright? Now, I know you don't want to hear that, but it's true. She's going to eat sweets. She's going to tell me how to live my life. She's going to tell me that my health sucks. She's going to tell me my sleep schedule sucks. She's not going to have a job. And she's going to bring in a bunch of stray animals. Ringo, on the other hand, she's selling her own food. They got lots of flavor. She'll bring home all the leftovers. I'm eating Dongo for the rest of my life. And it's got flavor. And she's really chill. And she's not going to cause a problem. That was weird. Anyway, goodbye, Ten Desires. Farty music. This is where this is where Ringo outshines. She would be a great roommate because she provides her own food and she can pay the bills with it. It's great. That's an easy one as well. Now, chat. I love Reimu. I would never live with Reimu, ever. Reimu will not do. Any housework. Raymu will not pay any bills. Raymu will ask me for change on a daily basis. Alright? She's not a good roommate. I love Raymu. I love her to death. But you know exactly how her personality is. And you know how dangerous it would be to live with that. <laughs> All of her vices would show up so quickly. Akyu, okay, Akyu is very frail. She wouldn't do much housework, but she is a certified writer. She is a writer, all right? So that's already a job. She has her own writing gig with the Chronicle and a Agatha Chris Q. She is, she is established, all right? She's also head of, a, head of an established family, so she's probably pretty well off already. And if she's stuck living with me, then she could probably, she can probably afford her half of the rent. Now, here's the thing, chat. I would never assume that just because a character is rich, that they are going to pay the entirety of the rent. The deal is 50-50 split. All right? I pay my half, you pay your half. That's the plan. All right? Now, I'm not going to deny, if, if the character was like, I'll cover the rent, don't worry. I'm not gonna fucking complain, because that, be, that would be foolish. Alright, I'm not gonna complain. But remember, when you're getting into this accommodation, when you get into this accommodation, you are forced to live together, it is assumed you are going to be 50-50 split on everything, and you don't know each other. So there's no reason they would, ev they would ever go out of your way to help you, there's no reason for you to go out of your way to help them. Of course, you know more about them than they know about you, so you need to make sure you don't come off as a total creep and just kind of slowly get to know them, you know? That's all you gotta do. Just be a good roommate, get to know your roommate, and then forge a friendship that way. Reimu, I, I... I don't know. I'd probably not want to deal with it. Uh, no, I, I would definitely not want to deal with it. This is Shinky. Letty White Rock or Tokiko? Tokiko is angry and likes reading. Letty is asleep for three seasons. And then I don't know what she does. Letty's the same as Chirno. Not quite. Because she she's the same as Chirno in the sense that she's cold. But I think Letty would actually be... She would basically be a stay-at-home mom. She would be a stay-at-home mom. Yukiona are very dedicated caretakers and very, uh, very hospital. Hospital? How, you mean hospitable? Either way, she would basically take care of the entirety of the housework, which would be great. But she could probably get a job. 
And she would be able to do things for winter time as well. Letty wouldn't be bad to live with. Assuming she's not asleep for the entirety of spring, summer, and fall. Okay. Now, this is gonna hurt me a little bit. Here's the thing. Yumeko is a maid. Yumeko has no obligation to do anything in the house except her own room. So you, I can't just assume that she'll clean the whole house, right? However, Shimada seems like a very dangerous roommate. Because she's always on the... Uh, she's... <laughs> she's always got her... She's in the stock market, man. But you know what? I would give her some money to invest for me. See what happens. She could make us both millionaires. She could take me to the moon, man. She could take me to the moon. No, she wouldn't sell my personal info. She's a god of, pro uh, of a prosperous market, right? She wouldn't destroy me in, in, the, in the attempt of her own fortune. I think she would be very smart and make me money. She would make her own Bitcoin. <laughs> the crypto god. The thing is, Yumiko is a very, uh, a capable maid who can take care of her own abode and also do, uh, maid work for other people. The thing is, I worry that her personality would be hard to get along with because she seems a bit stiff. Tenku, on the other hand, I do worry about her as well for a different reason entirely. I feel like she's the kind of person who'd wake you up at 3 in the morning with a business opportunity. <laughs> that, that's... That's what I feel. She'll just barge into your room and be like, Yo, I got a plan. You you have to sell right now. The stock the stocks are about about to crash. Like Shimada, the 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 market's not even open yet. I can't I can't do any trading. No, you have to trade right now. And then I get arrested for insider trading. Uh oh <laughs> Who sell- who buys stocks at 3 in the morning? I'll declare bankruptcy, she'll be like, damn shame, and then she'll be the one collecting all the property. <laughs> you know what? Sorry, Shimada, you're awesome, but I think I'd rather- I'd rather put up with the rather cold maid than, uh, your- your- your schemes. I might be doing her a little dirty, but I don't know if I trust her. <laughs> Kogasa and Merlin. Oh, that is a no-brainer. Alright. Let me do the comparisons. Merlin? Okay, she's cute. She can... She can do music-related things. Obviously, her sisters will be over a lot. She will be practicing her trumpet. Her trumpet will be very loud. She's also a poltergeist. So she'll be a, a present... Oh, she'll be up and working during the days... Uh, during the nighttime. Now, that's fine. She could probably get some gigs and do some performances... That's no problem, but she's noisy. Kogasa? She's a certified babysitter. She's a blacksmith. Always got an umbrella for you. Alright? Kogasa can pull her weight in every way, shape, or form. The only thing you have to deal with is she likes to jump out from behind uh, objects and doorways and go boo. But... That's okay. As long as she doesn't do it while I'm holding something important, I'll be fine. And I'd rather take that minor annoyance over doot horns at 2 in the morning. Alright? <laughs> Merlin would be a good alarm clock. That would not be a very pleasant way to wake up, though. She would just come up to you, 7 in the morning. It's morning! Doot! And then just a blast full of trumpet. But her, remember, her trumpet is a little dangerous if you hear it. Because it makes you really, uh, really hyper energetic. So you need to sleep with ear earplugs in. Otherwise, you'll never be able to sleep listening to it. Even if you think you can tolerate the noise, the effects it has will not let you sleep. So I would, I would definitely take, uh, I would definitely take Kogasa. Okay, now, here's the thing. I don't know anything about this, uh, th the Shingyoku dude. But, he, he looks like, he looks like he knows what he's doing. Sagame, on the other hand, I will never be able to talk to her. I would be scared. To talk to her. It would be very difficult. Alright. It would be very difficult. 
to share a house with her. I don't feel like your relationship with her would ever improve because no matter what you try to do to talk to her, she would never really respond. Unless she can communicate via written, via written word and not affect anything. In which case you can just be pen pals with her. I don't know, her ability seems to only affect spoken word. And again, I don't know anything about Shingyoku. I would worry about her. Because anytime she says something positive, it would it would invert to become uh, head to something negative. But then she would only speak in negatives and you'd have to like decipher her. But then like you also really wouldn't be able to talk to her at all because she probably wouldn't want to talk very much to begin with. There's also the whole Lunarian supremacy thing, which I don't know how I don't know how uptight Sagame is as a character because no one uses her. And I don't know what she'd be able to do in terms of rent. She'd be a fucking televangelist or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't I don't know what her ability would do for like anything. She'd probably just be a shut in. I would probably uh I'd probably- I'd probably hang out with this dude. You know why? Because there's- there's two halves of him, right? There's the male and the female side. I don't really know how that works, but... You know what? That's fine. I could be a third wheel if that's your girl. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure he can go out and get a job. He looks clean enough. I can talk to him. He's a dude. We can play video games. True- true friendship right there. With Shingyoku male. <laughs> Remember, this is from my perspective. You might not agree with me, but I am, uh... This is how I feel on this. Lyrica and Murasa. Sagami's ability only affects future events, so it could talk about stuff that already happened. But I imagine she wouldn't want to talk much in general, because what if she accidentally slips up? She would have to be very specific about her room- or her words. Alright, so let's weigh the pros and cons chat. Lyrica, same issues as uh, Merlin, but Lyrica's, Lyrica's uh, keyboard doesn't actually have any special properties itself. So it acts as a mediator between Merlin and Lunasa's instruments. So any solo practice from her is, you know, you just have to deal with some keyboard sounds, which I could tolerate. But again, she would have her sisters over a lot. And she would be in the same position as Merlin in terms of uh, occup occupation. Marasa, she's a sailor. She probably won't be home very much. But she'll make a lot of money. But the thing is... I wouldn't really want a roommate that isn't home very often because you can't really like... You know, you want... It's an opportunity to get to know these characters, right? So if you end up... If you room with a character who's not going to be home ever... Sure, they're gonna cover your rent, but you're basically living alone because they're always out at their job or something. So, I don't think you would really have a lot of time to really get to know Marasa at all. But she would be able to... She'd be able to pay for the, uh, her side of the rent, but she probably wouldn't be home very often to do, uh, any housework. But that's okay, because since she didn't actually, like, be... wasn't actually in the house, it would all be my housework anyway, right? She could also give me infinite water. I don't... Look, I don't really know how much I want to drink ghost water. <laughs> you know? Just, just... It's just a little strange. Ghost water is probably a weird taste. I would... I would probably choose with, uh... It'd also be salt water. Yeah, it'd be a salt water. I would live with Lyrica. I could tolerate Lyrica's solar performances, and... I'm pretty patient when it comes to noises at night anyway, so... If they want to practice, that's fine with me. Uh, that's a no-brainer. One of these characters is gonna get me on a... Um, <clears throat> on a, um, a very, uh, very dangerous situation. Two shut-ins. Yeah, essentially, but one of them is significantly more dangerous than the other. Now, here's the thing. Even going off Cannon Flandre... Flandre is a willing shut-in because all of her needs are taken care of. I am not babysitting her. Alright? 
I'm not doing her- I'm not making her food. I'm not doing her dishes. And I'm not paying her rent while she just hangs out in her room and threatens me with violence. No thanks. Suiko, on the other hand, she's used to working behind the scenes. She'll clean up after herself. She's probably capable of getting a job similar to Kaneko. Although her hat might freak me out if I see it hanging on the, the hat rack at night. I might get a little bit freaked out by that, but I'd take that over the other one. Flandre is not a good roommate. She is super high maintenance and incredibly dangerous. No matter what interpretation of her you you want to go with, either way, this is the, most of the same issues overlap anyway. Does Suiko's hat blink? You want to find out? <laughs> I don't think I would like to know that, because if, as soon as I see it happen, I'm not going to be able to look at it. Ben Ben or Aiki? That's another easy one. Alright. Would Suiko sleep with her hat on? I don't think so. I would imagine she takes it off. Ben Ben... Ben Ben has all the benefits of the, the Prism Rivers, with a less noisy instrument. Aki is going to yell at me like Kassen. <laughs> hmm. I can live with big body cloud or a Lunarian. Okay, there is zero chance that I am living with this character, because if there is any situation where you're living with Toyohime, you're probably on the moon. I don't want to be on the moon, alright? Now, Toyohime isn't that strict. She just, she's lazy, she eats peaches, she's got some crazy combat ability. But, she's also a Lunarian. So, her being on Earth, to be in this situation, seems pretty much impossible. So it's more likely I'm on the moon. I don't want to be on the moon. So I don't think the I don't think the Watatskis are good roommates at all. Not due to their not due to their necessarily their abilities or their personalities, but just because of the fact that they're lunarians and they're from the moon, that would be a constant problem. That's for sure. <laughs> she would treat me like a pet. Yeah. We would not be of equal standing no matter what you do. She would always see me as uh as like a a creature, a pet, and that kind of sucks. Maybe some people are into that, but then, you know, as soon as you make that clear, it gets weird, and then she just smacks you upside the head, and oops, there goes your head, you fucking weirdo. However, Unzan, my guy, best security you could ask for, I'll figure out a way to get him to hold a controller, we play some video games together. That's all you need, really. He's quiet, he minds his business, he can shapeshift to become objects. He's a great roommate. And he's really fucking strong. Don't fuck with him. Tojiko or Nazrin? Chat, do you think Tojiko can float through walls? So, let's uh, let's 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 weigh the pros and cons. Tojiko, don't know much about her. She can control lightning. That's annoying. She's a ghost, so she can float through your wall. That's annoying. No privacy at all. She seems kind of angry all the time, but I think that's just fanon more than anything. But there's not really much about this character that's known. I don't know what she'd do for a living, but she would be very convenient for cleaning hard-to-reach spaces. Now, Nazarin, on the other hand, Nazarin has full dominion over the mice. Alright. Never gonna have a rat problem. She's a dowser. So not only can she find anything, she can also find stuff that, like, make puts us well off. She, I know she's a little sassy. She's a little sassy. But if you know how to talk to her, you can get her to, you can get her to look for what you want. You just have to, you have to stroke her ego and also downplay her ability to kind of trick her into uh, doing what you want. She is the giant rat. She makes all the rules. So yeah, she would be able to... She would be able to make her own money. A lot of it, honestly. And you know what? If I buy her some cheese every now and again, the good shit, the good cheese, 
I can make a friend out of her. There you go. I would live with Nazrin. She's a good roommate. Hekatia or Kurumi? <laughs> She'd be offended if you offered her cheese? Why? She likes cheese. Mice like cheese. There's nothing wrong with that. Who doesn't like expensive cheese? You think she'd be insulted because I, I thought she uh, she was a mouse? I thought she'd like cheese? What if I just bought good cheese? And I was like, here, try this. And if she liked it, I'd be like, oh, score. Got it. Figured it out. Alright, Hekatia. Pros. Uh, very big deal. <laughs> None of her skills transfer over to a job, huh? Living with Hakatia is like living with an adult who refused to grow up. <laughs> oh no! No! She has three bodies. True. Chat, can her three bodies be independent or is it just three different personalities? I don't understand how her ability works. I don't really get how her ability works. No, she wouldn't she wouldn't make me dress in her outfits. I would respect her outfits, but I would not really want a part of it. But you know what? If she gave me a sick welcome hell shirt, I'd wear it. I'd wear that shit. Why not? Kata yourself as hell, the bodies are just proxies. Damn, she's kinda sick, isn't she? But which, uh, which Hikati, uh, like, I like, do they work? What's their job? <laughs> Wear a kilt? <laughs> I'll buy a kilt just to match with her. The only thing I could think of her doing is going to rock concerts and participating in a mosh pit. I don't know what her job would be. Could I trust that she'll be able to... Well, you know what? She probably has some pretty big- a pretty big treasury. You gotta think about that, too. A character- a character with a lot of money doesn't necessarily need a job to pay their side of, half of the rent, right? Do you think Hakatia has enough of a fortune that she doesn't have to have a job and she can just do whatever she wants and pay her rent? Because despite what her outfit looks like, she's pretty wise and mature. She's not gonna bring random people home. Even if she did, she'd probably just crush them. Pulp the shit out of them. She seems like she'd be a competent roommate. You would just have to refrain from commenting on her outfit. That's all. Uh, Kurumi is a vampire. Yeah, that's about all I got. So no garlic, no crosses. Probably have to smack her if she tries to bite me. And that would be, that could be a common problem. I don't know how bloodthirsty she is though. But I'd rather she didn't bite me. I don't know the repercussions to being bitten by vampire. I don't want to be a vampire either, so... I would rather she didn't. But there's not much to know about her. Oh, well mirrors are fine, she just can't see herself in them. Depends on what generation of vampire lore you're going with, I suppose. If you're in, if you if you're gonna get- if you're gonna get sent to hell anyway, you might as well be in good with the- the-, the <laughs> Katia. Well, that's one way to look at it, but I also wouldn't really wanna- <laughs> Wouldn't really wanna risk that. I would- I would say Hakatia wins this one, though. Yomu and Raisin. Oh, that's an easy one. Alright, weigh the pros and cons. Chat, we're on 2% and it's been 39 minutes. Yomu, gardener, swordswoman, all kinds of things she can do. Raisin. This is an easy one, too. Okazaki Yumeimi, or, or Kagero. Yumeimi. Uh, university professor at the age of 19. Studying magic. Very smart. Created a probability hyperspace vessel, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, capable of building an ICBM. And a, a nuclear-powered robot made within the confines of said environment. Certified super genius. Kagero. Sheds on your fucking couch. Nice. <laughs> 
Nice. Eleanor Satori. So Ellen has her own store, has a cat, always happy, sells magic items. Satori, recluse, stays indoors, reads books. She can be an armchair detective, so she can be a private investigator. However, dealing with her on a constant uh, daily basis would be very, very disheartening. So I wouldn't want to live with her. Kotohime or Sukasa? This is not even a question. This fucker's gonna get you put you on a, on a watch list. And this one... This one's just gonna mind her business. And you know what? She's, uh, she's royalty. And I guess she's a cop. <laughs> I don't know. Cops and robbers right here, yeah. Sukasa is too dangerous, yep. She- Oh, she'll be able to pay rent. But she'll never quite tell you how she made that money. Which is a little worrisome. Alright, well, this is this is pretty bottom of the barrel. Chat, I would rather live with a literal fucking body than live with Jun. Because Jun, Jun's ability will make you want to spend all of your money that you have at any given time without destroying yourself. That means I will, n I will literally be working and only making enough to make uh, make rent and bills and all of my excess cash I will blow because of her. Fuck no. Not a chance. I would rather live with a fucking zombie who just stands in the hallway and I have to be like, Yoshka, go to bed. And I have to push her to bed. She wouldn't do anything. She would do literally nothing. She's a zombie. But it would still be a better roommate than Jun. Smelly though? No, that's not true. Yoshka actually doesn't smell. She's she's pretty good. Pretty hygienic. Also, Sega would probably visit every now and again, and that would be a little bit worrisome, but that's still better than Jun. Alright, Wemmy or Ron? Um She would eat everything. No, no, no. She wouldn't eat the furniture. She would she would <laughs> I'd have to buy a lot of meat, but the thing is she could probably buy it raw, so I wouldn't really- she, she can eat it raw, so I wouldn't have to cook it. Alright, now here's the thing. Remy is sassy, has a small fortune, so she's a spoiled rich girl. You would have to entertain her, but you wouldn't have to worry about her paying rent. Hell, she might even just pay the entirety of the, the rent if you can entertain her. Ron I worry about because Ron- Ron's really smart. So there's definitely a lot of things she could do, but she's kind of at the beck and call of Yukari, so she's not very friendly, and she wouldn't really do much outside of what Yukari asks her to do. So I don't think Ron would be a very good, uh, I don't think Ron would be a good roommate. Now if Ron had more free will, then I, I would, I would change that. But I'm trying to get as close to canon as possible with this. Remy comes with Sakuya. That's true. In one way or another, Sakuya will be involved in this exchange. Which is probably for the best, because that just means Sakuya will take care of all the housework, and I just have to entertain Remy in a way that is suitable to her. Hopefully it doesn't mean I have to hang upside down. Yeah, Fan and, Fan and Ron is a lot more freedom to do what you want. Can and Ron is- she doesn't really act on her own accord, like, ever. All of her, uh, all of her actions are, she pretty much only acts based on what Yukari asks her to do. Yukari even has stated herself that she wishes that Ron would act on her own free will more. And Ron doesn't really show up very often at all. But there are a lot of things about her character we know. She's obviously very strong, she's very smart, she's very wise. But she only really acts to, uh, based on Yukari's orders. So, I feel like having a, like having a real relationship with that kind of character would be really difficult because, like, you're not part of the- you're not part of it. Unless Yukari's like, get along with them, in which case, it, you're- you're still not really part of it, because it's not something she's doing on her own accord, it's something she was told to do. Which kind of feels sucky. Remy, on the other hand? I don't know, I don't think I'm that entertaining, so... I'd have to do some pretty crazy shit to get her entertained. Maybe she'll like video games, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
Remy would be very difficult to please, I think. But I think it would be more engaging living with Ron. Ron would probably just make me feel kind of sad. She, she fits all the qualifications, but the human element isn't really there, you know? That's important. The, the human element. Living with a roommate. You kind of want to have some kind of relationship with them. You don't want them to just be the person that lives in the room across from you who shares the house, right? Streamer is not entertaining. Wait, listen. Listen, 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 listen. Remember, Remy is 500 plus years old. She's seen a lot of shit. She gets bored easy. Takes a lot to entertain her. Alright, Mayumi. Mayumi? Mayumi is a soldier. She follows orders in a similar vein to Keiki for Ron. So, I would, I would say it's another situation where, you know... You're kind of just what she kind of just does what Keiki tells her, so hard to really have a relationship there with her. Aya, on the other hand, well, she'll be out most of the day, but she can at least make money with her articles, and she probably talks a lot. I doubt she'll write anything about me because I'm not entertaining, but I would I would read her news and I would I would be able to talk to her directly, so maybe I could actually. Maybe I could actually hear about what Aya has to say. Aya's probably a huge gossip. That's fine. I don't have anything to hide. Besides, why would she want to tarnish... She wouldn't tarnish my reputation because she lives with me. And then guess what happens? They find my address. They find her address. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. The conditions required us to live together to a certain extent of time. She can't just dip out when it gets convenient. She's stuck with me. She's stuck with me for a while. Would she do me dirty when she leaves? I sort of doubt it. I sort of doubt she would. But I think even though she would be out during most of the day, she wouldn't leave much uh, stuff behind. And I'd be able to kind of just hear about what goes on, where she goes, where and stuff. She'd be an entertaining roommate, I think. Uh, alright, so... This is gonna sound weird, but I would rather live with the literal Hell Moon than Marissa. Okay? Hear me out. Literal Hell Moon. It's just a Hell Moon. That's it. She just has her room. I, I bring her some food. She says thank you. Sit down. Talk for a bit. Call today. Marissa. Room is full of so much junk. So much junk. An unbelievable amount of junk. That she finds on the streets. Or she pilfers. Because she's borrowing it. Now, borrowing doesn't really work the same here. Alright? It doesn't work the same. She's gonna get arrested. A lot. And if she fires her goddamn laser, that's an even bigger problem. Marissa is not suited for society. Alright? That's why she lives in the woods. That's why she lives in the stinky woods. Her business barely sees any customers. And all of the other traits of her character are going to shine out. She's going to be very messy. She's going to cause constant issues. I can't do it. It would be terrible to live with her. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. And she's also going to have a bunch of random ingredients as well. And she's going to run out of room in her room. And she's going to start stashing them in the living room. And then I'm going to start smelling stinky mushrooms that she's using for her potions and shit. I don't care how effective her magic is. There's way too much problems that come with her. Raymond and Marissa are some of the worst roommates in the entire series. <laughs> Alright. So I would rather, I would rather put a moon in my house. Alright? I'd rather put a fucking moon in my house. I'll bring her her meals. And just chill with the moon. Alright? That would be better than Marissa. Okay, now. Let's weigh this for a little bit. Clown piece. Built-in heater. End. 
you look at her torch, you go a little bit loopy. All right? So she'd also live under the floorboards, not in her own room. I don't like that. I don't like the idea of clown in my floorboards. Okay? She can literally set the whole building on fire by accident. Mailing. All right? Certified martial artist. Can teach her own class. Gatekeeper. Can do security. Defends her own home. She's tall. That's always a benefit over here. Uh, where's the negatives? Where's the negatives? There's... I just listed five positives. There's no negatives. So clean up after herself. She can do her own share of the work. She's home security. She pays rent. She's tall. There you go. There you go. It's so easy. She can sleep in if she wants. As long as she's doing her job. Alice or Dora me? Oh, okay. This is interesting. That's true. She wouldn't have to do 24-7 work. This is a 50-50. Dora me would show up in your dreams. And she would also talk to you a lot about things. Alice would mind her own business. Uh, she would stick to her workstation, aka her room. But I feel like she would. She's not the type to really shy away from conversation. She's not very social. But she shows that with the, in the Three Fairies manga that you know she'll welcome them in, have some tea with them, and just talk. So I think Alice is perfect. A perfect amount of social. She uh, she has her own occupation, her hobby. There's plenty of there. There's plenty about her character that you could really enjoy. I think living with. Just don't get creeped out by her doll. She'll get. A, she'll take offense to that. But I think, uh, depending on what the dolls look like, I'll be creeped out on them or not. <laughs> it depends, it depends. But, you know, I, I would, she, we would, she would mind her own business, but we would be able to talk to each other, and she would be able to maintain her, uh, her, her share of the expenses and chores. So yeah, Alice would be a good roommate. Okay, now before you say anything stupid, Futo does like to burn down yokai. But, she's actually very well adjusted to modern society in Gensokyo. She has a lot of plates, so I always have dishes. I never have to buy a dish set in my life. She has a boat. I don't know what that really does. But she has a boat. Okay? She likes humans. She's very social. I don't know what her job would be. And I don't know if she has money. So I'm not really sure how good Futo would be in that sense. She has connections to royalty. Mm. You get rent paid in plates. <laughs> Dude, you know how much fun it would be if she could materialize plates? And instead of, uh, instead of having to do the dishes, I can just be like, Alright, I used the plate, I can just fucking yeet it at the wall, and just watch it shatter. And then Fukuto will be like, I got this, and then just dematerialize that shit, and then we get a new one. That would be so stress relieving, if I could just yeet plates when I'm done with them. <laughs> I don't know what the boat does, though. It's so cathartic, dude. That was some delicious food. And then you just... Bam! Destroy it. This bitch empty. <laughs> the only problem I see with Futo is I don't know how, how much of an occupation she has. Uh, it might be difficult to talk to her, and I hope she wouldn't find it offensive if I, if I had to constantly ask her to repeat herself. I wouldn't tell her to speak English. But I would tell her that I have a hard time understanding her, and she, uh, like, uh, she would need to repeat herself a lot. You can sell her plates. That's fucking brilliant. There you go. We figured it out. We figured it out. Now, Mima. Alright. Angry. Strong. Green. I don't trust her. Literally a ghost. 
You can be taught magic. What am I gonna do with magic? Oh, I know. I can pull a. Uh, I can pull her bounce check out of from behind her ear when I give it to the landlord, and we're up shit's creek without a paddle. Ooh, that's some good magic. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think Mima can help. She's a ghost. She's just gonna float through my wall and be like rents do. Like Jesus, you gonna pay it? No, you are. Oh man. Human hating. Yeah, she probably wouldn't get along with me and I wouldn't get along with her. She seems like more trouble than she's worth. I'd rather live with Futo. Mamizo or Mike? Okay, this is actually really easy and this is a, not really because Mamizo's bad to live with, but because Mike is literally a good luck charm. She's a lucky cat. She is a blessing of fortune just by existing. Hanging out with her? Come on, man. That you just open the door and be like, hey, Mike, and she'd be, hi, hi, and then suddenly I am now like 150% good luck for the rest of the day. That's so easy. That's a fucking, that's, that's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> that's a no-brainer. And the best part, she's basically Tay without the shithead part. All you have to do is mind the fact that she's a cat, right? Don't step on her tail. Don't force her to take baths. For the love of God, don't insist she have a litter box. <laughs> All right, don't do that. Just you just have to. You can just live a normal life. You can just live a completely normal life with Mike, and have no issues. Also, I I would like I would take her out. I would take her out to learn a helicopter. All right, I would like her to learn to be a helicopter pilot. That's just something I would do because I'm an idiot. All right. I want to give her her helicopter license. Then I can I can fulfill my uh can fill, fulfill my head cannon. <laughs> now mommy Zo? No thanks. I don't actually know what Mike's ab ability is because Omake text. But she is a lucky cat. She's a lucky cat, so she's good luck. Mommy Zo would be kind of hard to live with. She's a big shot. For sure. I have a feeling she would respect uh, boundaries and she would hang out in her own uh, areas. But at the same time, feels like she's a hard character to really talk to. And I don't really know what she does. And she'll probably try to pay rent with Tanuki leaves, which is just a problem waiting to happen. That's a really big problem waiting to happen. There are a lot of issues that could potentially come up with living with her. So I can't recommend it. <clears throat> Mike either brings peop uh, brings in people or money. She can't do both since she's basically got bullied out of her training for what I gather. Oh. Well, I hope she brings money. I don't need her to bring people. I have her and her is all I need. Patchy and Mai. Alright, now... Mai is a similar vein of, of uh, Satono. She's a dancer. And she's in good with a, a very strange family that I don't really want to be a part of too closely. However, Patchouli, she's a shut-in. She's definitely a shut-in. Her room is going to be chock full of books. Will she be able to get a job with that? Does she have ties to Remy's fortune because she's a friend of Remy's? That's the question. I don't mind her being a recluse, but like, can she afford to do so, right? That's the question. She'd be a great academic. I can agree to that. I can agree to that. But she'd probably be long distance, yeah. Patch Zoomly. There you go. Brought it all back around. Just a bit of asthma. Never hurt anyone. I'll get her an inhaler. Oh, I can bring her her food. I don't mind, Chad. I don't mind being a bit of a lap dog. Like I can, I can bring her some food, some tea. Why not? I, I'll learn how to make it. I don't mind that much. It's when it's like a blatant problem, and I'm like basically a fucking ser a servant. It's like fuck off. But you know, if Patchy's doing, if Patchy's doing her work. And staying in her room, I don't mind bringing her meals. 
It depends on how much you put into the relationship, how much you get back, right? So, a character like Patchy, you can bring meals to that. That kind of thing. She made a rocket from scratch, she can 100% get a job. True. True. However, that rocket was powered by gods. Remember that. Also, Quack would be involved. Yes. Yes. Quack would sleep on the couch, though. <laughs> She would sleep on the couch. I'd make room for her. Don't worry. Momoyo and Mioi. Okay. Uh, I don't know much about Momoyo. But... I have a feeling she wouldn't be home very much. Mioi? She's a sashiki warashi, so she's good fortune in the household. Uh, she is a really good cook. And she can very clearly open up her own, uh, her own izakaya. She can open up her home foods place. Completely. She just really needs to fucking chill on the, uh, the nightmares. Alright? She has to chill on the nightmares. But otherwise, she can cook, she can clean, she can run her own restaurant, and she's good luck. She's one of the best choices. Just please don't give me nightmares. I will not drink alcohol from her if she gives me a nightmare. Even once! I will never touch that shit again. And you know what? No one even remembers that's really what's happening, or the cause of it, but because I know... Careful of that. Gotta be roommates with Minecraft Steve and get ore. No, but she'll be in the mines for like... She'll be in the mines for 18 hours a day. She'll have a hole in her, in her room that connects to them. Sure, she's gonna have a cool bunch of cool magical uh, stones, but... I don't know, man. She's gonna be... You can't compare that to Mioi. You just can't compare that to Mioi. There's too many benefits that come from Mioi. Okay. Now, remember what I said about Mike? And how Mike is basically Tay without the shitheadness? Tay is 100% a good luck charm. She is a rabbit of good fortune. The only thing you have to put up with is some shitheadery. But, she's not gonna destroy the house, because she lives there too. Alright? She is literal good fortune, so she is worth living with, even if she causes some issues. In my opinion. Orange? I don't know, she twirls a baton, I guess. I don't really know what she does, I don't think anyone does. Look, I don't know the extent of how bad Tay is gonna make it, but... Remember, Tay's fortune... Tay is well aware of her own good fortune. So, it's pretty powerful. And if she's just gonna be in my general vicinity, I'm gonna get some of that good fortune. Right? There you go. She's gonna... I don't know what she's gonna do. She's kind of a loose cannon. <laughs> but, I'd risk it. Oh, that's an easy one. Alright. So, you can live with a... You can live with a nuclear reactor with single digit IQ or you can live with my boy. My guy, the fortune teller. All right? He's he's a genius. He figured out how to come back from the dead. He's very smart. He's in the pursuit of the finer arts. He's only interested in pursuing uh, more knowledge. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> he's a genius and very smart. Yeah, he's got a lot of brains to spare. In fact, he spared it on the floor. He spared it on the wall. He even spared a little bit of it on Reimu. Free unlimited clean energy, though, if you choose bird. True? <laughs> True. I just worry about how the output will come from Utsu, is all. How bad is the output? She can- she's obviously she can power- she- she basically removes the heating bill entirely. And... I don't really know if- I don't really know if job... Nuclear reactor is a real job. But she seems kind of high maintenance because she's not that bright. Pun intended. <clears throat> Remember, no, see, again, that's why I said 
That's why I said it depends on how strong the heat is, right? I would say she has good control over her, her, uh, her ability and can produce enough heat that doesn't give me skin cancer. Because why would she do that to me, right? But I also feel like she would forget the arrangement a lot or probably forget me a lot as well. And then it's like, oh, Jesus, Oku, what are you doing? Exporting energy is a real way to make huge money. Yeah, but don't don't I have to explain why this this girl with a giant red eye on her chest is capable of ex expending an energy to like rival a nuclear reactor? Doesn't that seem like a really hard thing to explain to someone? Because I'd have to. Ooh, she's in a temper. Now the fortune teller is a bit of a meme, unfortunately. But he is he is pacifist. Well, not a pacifist, but he is a peaceful sort. I just worry that his research would get a little, you know, he's a little scary looking is all. If I saw him in the middle of the night, I'd probably scream. Especially if he looks like that. I, I would go, I gotta go with Oku. He's a walking death flag, yeah. Kasume or Satan? Alright, Kasume lives in a bucket. She'll constantly look at you like this because you didn't feed her. She won't talk to you. And she'll probably fall on your head and cause a concussion at least twice a week. Possibly a serial killer. <laughs> and Satan. Yes. It's just grape juice on her mallet, okay? It's just it's just grape juice. She makes her own mochi. She makes her own dongo. It's not as popular as Ringo's. She's probably got more attitude than Ringo. But she can at least make food. Honestly... I would choose Saiyan over Kasume, but I would definitely not choose Saiyan over a lot of other characters. Parsi or Kaneko? That's easy. Parsi is actually dangerous. Parsi's ability will make you jealous, and then she will feed off your jealousy. That's dangerous. Hella dangerous. And then Kaneko has shown up again. As we already know, she is big lady in charge. Boss lady. And I would still say Megumu. I would rather live with Megumu than Parsi. Eden or Luna? Okay. Now, Eden, genius doctor. Brilliant doctor. Very, very easily capable of taking care of the, of the money side of things. I would be a slave. I would love to be a stay-at-home husband type of deal with that character. I, I clean, I'll clean this fucking house, I'll make it spotless. You pay for everything. Because I know you can. <laughs> I know you can. However, Eren will constantly be in situations where she has to bring over her... Her, uh, illegitimate child, Kaguya. And then I have to figure out how to deal with Kaguya. That's where the money comes in. Alright? Eren will pay for everything in exchange. I do all the housework and I entertain Kaguya. Which means I need to keep her off the internet. I could show her the internet, I could set her up to be a streamer, but at the same time, if something bad happens and Eden doesn't like that, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. This is platonic. I said stay at home husband because I don't know another way to phrase it, but basically I do all the housework and then she's the breadwinner. That's all. Aaron sounds like she should be stressed out by the antics of all her peers at Ante. Maybe. Maybe. But she would make good money because her, you know, her shit works. And Luna's cute, but Luna doesn't do anything. Luna is gonna get sassy, She's and she doesn't have a job. So again, fairies are like taking care of a child for the most part in terms of their, uh, qua their, uh, contribution to things like rent and living and stuff. So I would, I would take Eden. Eden might get a little sassy with you because she's a Lunarian, but the, the pros outweigh the cons. Alright, I don't think Kongura would fit in your house. Because she's huge. So yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to do about that one. I would still take Ichiden. I would still take Ichiden over Kongura. Satono over Kongura. I would take the Dancy Lady. Okina or Narumi? Well, the fact that I don't want to deal with the dancing ladies because I don't want to deal with Okina says enough about that. 
Okina has a lot of powers and abilities and stuff, but she's kind of scary. Narumi, on the other hand, she's uh, she's polite. She's well mannered. Uh, I don't know what she does for a job, but I'd, I'd still rather live with her than Okina. I think. Oh, she'd be a, a street performer. Her stick might get old, though. Ah, oh, I don't know what Narumi would do. As, um... To pay, pay rent. But she would be a very polite person. It would be easy to get along with her. But I don't know her skills. I guess she can perform magic. She could probably make a... a, a I don't know. Jizo is a protector of children and travelers, if I remember right. Oh! So she'd be- so you're saying that she'd be either a babysitter, a travel guide, or a preschool teacher. You know what, actually, I could- I could see Narumi as a preschool teacher. There you go. Yeah, no, Narumi would be good. Narumi would be good. Okay, well, um... The thing is, chat, an ICBM doesn't pay rent, doesn't, doesn't do its chores, those are the cons. The pros, it doesn't eat, and if I play my cards right, I don't have to worry about rent anymore. In fact, I won't have to worry about anything ever again. <laughs> Also, I would have to explain why I am storing an ICBM in my house. No, you don't understand. It's alive. It has a face. It's Mimi-chan. <laughs> it gives me strategic importance. I have become a miss- a launch site, yeah. Mimi-chan can force the world to pay rent for you. But I only have one. <laughs> if I- if I lose her... If I lose her, then what? Then I'm gonna get fucked. That's like crazy Steve if I talk too loud to it. She'll explode. No, Mimi-chan's too dangerous. I'd rather live with Meta. I'd rather live with Genji. Mai or Momiji? Okay. I don't know much about Mai and Yuki. But Mai has a bit of a rotten personality. So... I wouldn't want to live with her anyway. Momiji, on the other hand, security detail. She's great. She works on security. She has a good sense of loyalty. I can't play Shogi to save my life, so unfortunately brain games are out of the question, but I could try. She might be a little bit rigged, hard to talk to, but, you know, I'll give it a shot. A mean park ranger. She can teach you. Yeah, but Tengu Shogi is like so advanced, they make up their own moves to make it more interesting. I can't even play standard Shogi. You think she's gonna have fun playing me? I gotta be like a fucking chess grandmaster if you want that. Still, Momiji would be fine, I think. She'd just be a little bit stiff, I think. But, you know, she would have a job. She would maintain her, uh, her side. Her side of the house well. And she has a good sense of loyalty. Yeah, I know, it's rigid. Canon Momiji, not Awu Momiji. What the hell am I gonna do with Awu Momiji? I'm gonna open the door, walk in, and she's dancing. And she's she's howling. Like, god damn it. G get a job, you bum. Sariel and Ellie. Okay, uh, important question. Is Sariel 20 feet tall? Or is she shrunk down to human sizes? I don't really think that even matters that much because she'd be kind of scary to talk to. I just open the door. There's angel wing feathers everywhere. And she's like, child, prepare for demise. And I'm just like, oh, good morning to you too, Sariel. <laughs> she's uh, kind of scary. She's a mortician. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. You did pick the Hell Moon earlier. 
Yeah, because she doesn't really need furniture, right? She just kind of sits in the middle of the room as one big item. Sariel doesn't do that. She might not be able to fit in the doorway. Maybe Ellie would be better. Sariel would be hard to talk to, I think. Also, she would eat a lot because she's huge. Maybe she wouldn't need to eat at all. I think it depends on what the size of the character is. But yeah, she's a little bit dangerous. So I wouldn't really mess around with her. Sariel is kind of a scary character. Mm, not as scary anymore. Alright, Yorihime or Dayose? Okay, here's the thing. Dayose, same issues as Fairy. However, Dayose is the most mature fairy of the bunch. She would be very well-mannered. She would do chores. She would probably even look into part-time work. Or just helping out in general. I think she would be fantastic. But she would be very shy. Yorihime, on the other hand, I'm not living on the fucking moon. I hate the moon. I don't want to go to the moon. The Lunarians are going to force you to live on the moon. And if you're not on the moon, then it's going to be a situation where you are you are a lesser being. They are going to constantly talk about the moon. How Lunarians are better. There's too much there's too much annoyance that comes with these characters if you have to live with them. Even if she's strong, and you know, like she's a she's a general, but like, congratulations! That what does that do for me? That doesn't really do anything for me at all. She basically just be like, I own this room and name, and then she'll never be there. So, why would you want to live with her? I would rather Diose, because I think even though Diose would be like, same issues, uh, similar issues with the fairies. Dayose would do her best to kind of like rectify a lot of those problems in a way that I can I can definitely get behind. I like her. Aki or Ellie? That's an easy one. So, Minoriko, obviously she's a harvest goddess. Bountiful harvest. Gonna have her own green room. Very easy choice. She will be she will be the hit on the farmer's market. The, the, the fucking love her. Alright. So not only do I not have to worry about uh, rent. And, and like bills. But she also produces fresh food. That's healthy. And doesn't cost me like anything. Do you understand? How good that is? To both be financially uh, secure. And also have fresh quality food for a healthy diet. She's so good. Shizuha, Shizuha, I don't know if she would be, well, we'll get to her when we get to her. She's the one who kicks trees. Minoriko is, uh, Minoriko is the harvest goddess. Shizuha is the autumn goddess. This is Shizuha, but it says Minoriko. No, that's, that's Minoriko. That's, that's Minoriko. Shizuha is the other one. Shizuha is the blonde one. She's the blonde one in the red dress. She's got the grapes. Yeah. The hats, the grapes. That's Aki. Nah, shut up. Hina and Star. Alright. <laughs> Minoriko is so good. Why is there no Major Rico? <laughs> Alright. Um. Chat. Hina is one of the worst roommates you can have. Here's why. Hina is a character who collects misfortune from others. Alright? Now, she definitely does do that. However, being around her will expose you to those misfortunes. Because she collects them, but does not take them in herself. They simply gather around her. That's why people avoid her in canon, because she's constantly swarmed by misfortune, and misfortune will find its way onto you if you hang around her. So, yeah. Star Sapphire, she's gonna be a little, a little bastard. 
but honestly, she is a preferable roommate to Hina because Hina can actually just fuck you up. And you never know how it's gonna happen because Mort's fortune takes uh, effect in many different ways. And it's a shame because Hina would be a nice person, but there's just too much risk involved. There's way too much risk involved with hanging around her. If you so much as pass by her, you're, con congrats, you're now cursed. Alright, Star, you win this round. Isn't Star the most responsible of the three fairies? Yeah, but she's also a shitter. Ringo or Kane? Okay, hold on. So we already know Ringo's benefits. Kane. Teacher. Alright. Transforms into, under the full moon. Sheds on the couch. God damn it, Kane. She's a lecturer. I don't think she's better than Ringo. Alright. Now, I think she's fine as a teacher. I got nothing against Kane. But, again, Ringo produces some sick food, sells her food, and I get to eat that food. She's incredibly chill. Kane's gonna lecture me on, on shit. Kane's gonna lecture me on shit. As soon as I fall into a bad habit. Now, granted, I don't have terrible habits, but, like, I don't need to be nitpicked on everything, right? And, you know, if I get her mad when she turns into, uh, the green one... I don't know about that. That's a little scary. Alright. I'm gonna go with Ringo. I, I think Ringo would be better. It seems like a lot of my, uh, a lot of my preference leans towards one thing. Using food? To make a living because I get the benefit from the food as what well, at the same time as the benefit of the living And again Ringo's personality is pretty chilled out. So she would put she'd, she'd be down to just do whatever I think And Kane, you know Kane would be she's older than me both mentally and physically So it would be kind of like it'd be kind of like living with my mom. I guess speaking of that chat my mom brought me more butter chicken and I am so fucking excited to eat it after the stream. You have no idea. I finished the shit out of that bowl yesterday. It was so good. She brought more. And I was like, oh, I just ate, so I have to eat it after the stream. I'm gonna. Do you think some of them would hate it if you listen to Toho music or the characters they hated? Would they know it's Toho music? I mean, that it's getting weirdly meta at that point, but... I don't want to think about that aspect of this whole thing. <laughs> Alright? I don't want to think of that. Alright, well. So the choices are... The choices are, of course, the same deal. Lecturer versus lecturer. One has a job as a teacher. And is very caring to humans. Easily Kane. Okay, now. Here's the thing, chat. One of these... Is an eyeball creature. The other one is Yuga Magan. So it's hard to really choose here. I'm not really sure where you would keep Yuga Magan in my house. Like, if I open the door and it's just like, yo, Magan, you here? And then I just get five eyeballs just like immediately in my face. I'm just like, all right, you're there. Cool. You hungry? Wait, you're a giant floating eyeball. You can't eat anyway. So anyway, you want to go out there and find a job? Oh wait, you're a giant floating eyeball. Never mind. He's just... Living with Yuga Magan is just accepting that the room next door is in a constant state of Windows DVD screen. You know, you know? Like every single ball just bounces off the wall into the corner. And you just, it just keep, it just keeps going. And it just keeps going, and it just keeps going. And you gotta live with that. So your, your room, that room is basically inaccessible for the rest of your time together and you just open the door every now and again and he gets really flustered and looks at you. And it's just like, I guess I don't have to, he doesn't eat food, I suppose. I, I, that's great. But yeah, no, no, uh, also explaining the floating eyeball room to people seems really difficult. Alright, so this is my house. Alright, that's my shelf with all my fumos. Please pay- don't, don't worry that you're- you're one of the characters who has been turned into a plushie. That's not weird or anything. Speaking of that, chat. I'd have to hide the Fumo. <laughs> I'd have to hide the Fumo, the character. 
<laughs> that would be weird. That would be hard to explain. It's like, oh, you know, this is my house. This is my room. What's that room over there? Don't worry about that room. Do they open the door and they just see five Yuga Magan balls just boing, 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 boing. I close the door and it's like, just, just forget you saw that. All right, just, just don't, don't just pretend you didn't see that. Okay. That kind of thing. That's hard to explain. And Yukari. Yukari's a terrible roommate. Alright. Terrible roommate. Because she's gonna she's gonna be in her room. Anytime she wants something. Oh, there's a gap. There's a gap. There's a gap. There's a gap. Oh, great, yep. Imagine, chat, you're just sitting on your computer, and in the corner of your eye. Just you see a fucking gap materializing, and you look at the look inside that horrid creation, and Yukari's head just pops up and is like, "Yo, we out of snacks. What do you want me to do about it? How about you just fucking gap magic and go take something off the shelf? Just leave me alone. <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? Not to mention she hibernates throughout the winter. If she was my roommate, I would ask her if I could stick my arm through a gap, though." I, I would I would ask her if I could do that and if it would be okay. I imagine it would not feel pleasant, but I have to know. I have to know. She would basically constantly have Ron over to do her her work for her. She wouldn't do anything herself, not that she would tell me. She would eat her own food by taking my shit secretly or taking other people's shit secretly. And she would just be an overall difficult character to interact with. In other words, Yukari is not a good roommate. However, she's probably a better roommate than five bouncing eyeballs. Okay, again, I don't know anything about Shingyoku female. I don't know the relationship between Shingyoku female and male. I don't know if it's the same it's the same character, but two different like personalities or bodies sharing one personality. I don't know if it's his girlfriend. I don't know what the fuck's going on there. I really don't. But I think Aki is easily the choice here in a, a lot of toy. A lot of a lot of choices. Okay, well. <laughs> Reimu. Wow, Reimu showed up and I hear Green Reimu's theme. Classic. I love Reimu. I don't want to live with Reimu. Boog. Okay, now think about this for a second, all right? Now, Rukoto is a nuclear-powered maid robot. How long does she last? She's not a real character, right? She's a robot. She'll do her duty, her job, but, like, there's not really a real person there, you know? I don't like that. Booga, on the other hand, Wriggle, Anytime I see a spider, I see a fruit fly, I see anything in my house, I can be like, Yo, Riggle, can you make sure this doesn't get on the food? There you go. I don't know if Riggle can find a job, but Riggle can maintain... She could be a beekeeper. Why not? Does Riggle have command over bees? She would be a good beekeeper, right? Rukuto was terrible at chores, so Reimu had to do everything herself anyways. Oh, oh I didn't remember that part. She wears pants. Oh, yes, she wears pants. <laughs> what? Wearing pants isn't a job. I think Riggle could be a, a beekeeper if she can control bees the same way that she, uh, she controls other bugs. That's my opinion. All right. Chat, we are 8% through the sorter, and it's been almost an hour and a half. This is probably going to be a part two. This is probably going to be a part two sorter, for sure, because this is going on for a while, but that's okay. We're going we're to part two this, but we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I would say Riggle. Riggle has her own delivery service. She's got bugs, but I do think she could be a beekeeper. All right. I think Riggle would be a good beekeeper. I j and again, she controls bugs, right? So if I have any issues with fruit flies and stuff, I can just be like, Hey, Riggle, can you take care of this? And she will we'll take a non-violent approach to bugs. And I will show her that bugs don't creep me out because... Well, I mean, they do creep me out a little bit. Depends. Depends on how close they are to me. Can she attract rare bugs to sell? Do you think she would do that? Well... 
Isn't that like the equivalent of- you know what? I'm not even gonna make that comparison. <laughs> I don't- I don't think Riggle would sell the bugs she collects. That's a bad- that- that would- that would probably keep her up at night. Alright? Can you attract rare people to sell? <laughs> no, I can't. See the problem there? Yeah, you see? Change that sentence to fit bugs for Riggle and you see where it becomes a problem. Moko and Letty. Alright, now, here's the thing, chat. Here's- here's Moko. Let me explain Moko to you in a way that I know because I know this character. Moko... Her house is in... Not the greatest condition. She doesn't take care of herself. So, you know, that's kind of annoying. She doesn't have to eat. She doesn't really have a job, but she could get- she could get a job. She could be a guide. But here's the thing. Moko also doesn't talk very much, but she's a good listener. She does- she does, uh, listen. In Inaba of the Moon and Inaba of the Earth, it, uh, Moko is actually very, very good at household chores, such as cooking and cleaning. So, of course, that is only present in Inaba of the Moon and Inaba of the Earth, and that, that is dubiously canon, so you can- you can take it or leave that. Right? You can take or leave that. I have to get used to her being able to just die and come back, yes. That would be kind of creepy. I don't think I could ever get used to the sight of a corpse, but if it's, if she comes back, I'll probably be okay to an extent. So yeah, it's... There are elements of Moko's character that, like, would be good, but I think there's a lot of elements of her character that becomes a bit of a headache to deal with. Letty, on the other hand, as we already discussed, she's a fantastic care, uh, caretaker. She pretty much excels in all the areas that Moko herself would excel at, but the, uh, there's added benefits to have with Letty, so Letty wins here. This is the only time Letty wins over Moko in any universe. Well, there are other sorters, of course, but I would not pick Letty over Moko in much other things, that's for sure. Now, I would still take Moko over Tokiko, because Tokiko is actually just a brat with a bad attitude. Oh my god. Oh no. Both of these characters raise potential problems. Doesn't Letty just disappear sometimes? That's okay, as long as she comes home. <laughs> as long as she comes home, it is her house. Alright chat, so here's the thing. I can live with Snai, who is actually, like, a, a genius scientist. She's actually really smart, and she's, uh, she's well-versed in science. She even explains cold fusion. Um, and she's capable of producing miracles. And, she could actually relate to things in the outside world. Kaguya, not as easy to relate to. Uh, neat. Royalty, obviously has fortune to her name. Most likely still has it anyway, because I know she's, uh, she's been banished from the moon. And she would probably enjoy things to pass the time, like video games. But I also think Sny would as well, but Sny would also be, like, a working lady. Sny would probably do a lot more work around the house. Kaguya would be high maintenance. However, Kaguya would probably become a streamer. And I would have to- I would have to give her the rundown. Here's what I would tell Kaguya. Alright. Okay, here's what you do. You buy a webcam. You make it 60% of your, uh, of your feed. No, 80%. Anywhere between that range. You have a little bit of gameplay on the side. And you just let the camera look at your face. There you go. That's money. And she'll- she'll, she'll be like, okay. Why? And I will have no answer for her. Okay? No answer. And then I will warn her. I will warn her one thing. Number one! Never show your feet. Alright? That's lesson number one. Lesson number two! Never tell anyone I live with you. That's dangerous. That creates a problem for both of us. Alright? I will never show up on your stream. Ever. In any capacity. If you need to tell people you have a roommate, 
Do not mention that I am a guy. <laughs> you can lie if you want. I don't care. Just never mention that. Ever. Rule three. Stay away from Oli fans. But up but but up but I'm Goats and I. Uh Yumeko and Yashie. Now I don't really need to do much to this one. Because I think I would take you know, I, I think I would take a rigid maid to uh, a literal mob boss. You know? Yashie wouldn't respect me. Yashie wouldn't respect anything about me. Yashie wouldn't respect anything about anything in this house. And she's a fucking mob boss. <laughs> but she looks cute. <laughs> Listen, man. Listen. They all look cute. Sometimes you gotta look past the face and see what's inside. You would never be able to beat Yashie in an argument. No. No. I'd go for the cheap shots, and then she'd probably just, you know, whack me. I'd take Yumiko. <laughs> Honey, it's 4 p.m. Time for day trading! Yes, thank you. Time to invest in some new crypto! <laughs> oh, my poor funds. I bless you, Shimada. Oh my god. Okay. Now, now, before, before the Sage of fans, uh, get offended, alright? I'm, I'm, I'm using, I'm using my pass. Alright? I get five seconds to say whatever the fuck I want about this character and you can't be mad. Okay? Alright? Here we go. Living with Seija is the equivalent of living with a rebellious teen. Alright? <laughs> there you go. She would never cooperate. She would never do her chores. She would never pay rent. She would constantly try to stick it to the man by never paying her fucking rent. I'm the man, by the way. I'm never gonna pay, never gonna do anything. And she's just gonna cause problems. That's it. This is- this character... ...would be impossible to deal with. I would never... ...ever... ...want to share a, a house with her. Alright? Never. Mugetsu. I don't know anything about Mugetsu. She's not even a real maid. She's pretending. But you know what? Maybe she- maybe she'll actually do the work pretty well. She's also crazy badass, and she's got a sister who she can invite over and we can play board games. There you go! She might be a little weird, but I don't think Mugetsu would be that bad. It's better by default. <laughs> yeah. Sage is not a good- not a character you want to live with. If you live like a neat sage, it will do all the work. I don't think that's how her personality would work. Alright, alright, Chot. Here's the thing. Kogasa, we already know Kogasa's benefits. Raiko, alright. Part of the Prison Rivers. Can do her own solo gigs. Knows how to dress. A lot of things here. Raiko seems like the kind of character who could drink, like, Zun levels of beer. You know? Maybe that's just me. She could probably down a big, big-ass pitcher and be good. I don't think Raiko would be bad. But I think Kogasa outweighs her in the benefits. No, I don't think she's a party girl. I don't think she's a party girl. I think she just... She knows how to dress for the occasion. She's the, She's in it for the music more than anything. But she also knows how to enjoy herself. This is what I've decided, because Zun won't give me anything else. Might be- uh, <laughs> I'm not- no, he's- I'm- I'm not horny. Alright, none of the decisions I have made have been based on my wiener. And they will not be, because this is not how this is supposed to work. That would be problematic if it was. You must attain your post-nut clarity when making these decisions. Alright? Alright? I would go with Kogasa, because again, Kogasa, so many good things. So many good things about her character that help out. Just have to deal with the smaller issues is all. Okay, well, 
Remember what I said about Merlin and remember what I said about Raikou? In this situation, I would take Raikou because Raikou would probably be better. Also, Raikou would pick me out a nice suit so I could go to their concerts and look very suave. Very good. Okay, well, that's literally living with a teenager. <laughs> that is literally living with an unemployed teenager, so... Can't do that. But On. Alright. Not only is On helpful, she's also adorable. She is dog. And she can create two of herself. So she can do twice the housework. And while she's out working, she can also be at home at the same time. There's so much she, she could do. On would be great. She would be more of a... No, I wouldn't say she'd be more of a pet. She's more of, she's more of a roommate. But she's about it. She would be as fun to live with as a pet. I, I would like her. Easier to explain why you're living with a dog statue. True. Very true. But Sumireko just, you know, she's still in school. She doesn't have a job, so... It would just be a similar issue with the fairies, but... Sumireko just is like an actual, real, honest-to-god teenager, so... <laughs> that's, that's exactly how it would be. Oh, my bad. I picked Yuka. You know what? I actually would have picked Yuka anyway. Hear me out. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Okay. Yuka. Hella scary. Only if you piss her off. Home security. Makes her own garden, her own flowers. Sells her own flowers. There you go. She covers all her... She'll do all her work. She can, uh, she can pay for herself. She is home security at its finest. And... As long as I don't piss her off... She's good company, right? Easy, easy. Hates humans, that's okay. That's okay. Because as long as I respect her flowers and I don't piss her off, we're good, all right? No, I'm not, in a, I'm not, trying, to, I'm not trying to get stepped on, okay? Remove that thought from your head. This theme is played like three or four times now. I am not trying that, I'm not that kind of guy. So I can't tell if Kana Yuka is chill or not. Well, in Toho 9, she's just kind of as along for the ride, right? Like, Yuka, Yuka plays with them, and then the characters fighting her are like, I should probably go before, like, I can't win this, so I should just get on, get on the way. And Yuka's like, oh, no, come back. Also, Yuka shows up on a lot of background panels in uh, the written, in the, in the mangas and stuff, too. So she's definitely more social than people give her credit for. So I think she's easy, I think, I wouldn't say she's easy to get along with, but I think that she, her age has kind of mellowed her out a bit, and she's more, uh, she's more approachable. So, you know, I think she would be fine. Don't call her old, though. That'd be kind of mean. Then you would actually get stepped on. She probably bullies anyone who challenges her for fun. Yeah, but she probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't mess with people that, like, you know, can't really fight back, I suppose. She wouldn't kill me, I hope. <laughs> All right, so Yugi and Gengetsu. Onis are not good roommates. Yugi is loud. She drinks a lot. I don't really know if it'd be a good idea to live with her. She would want to drink a lot. I wouldn't be able to handle it. She would be loud a lot. Now, obviously, she could probably get a job like any physical based like thing any anywhere but she probably wouldn't want to and who am i to <laughs> who who am i to, to to stand up to her right maybe she'd respect that <clears throat> maybe she'd respect that if i tried to stand up to her but i can't you know if she decides if she decides, I don't want to work, I'm just going to fuck around, because, you know, they're very free-spirited, then what am I going to do about it? On the other hand, Gengetsu, don't know anything about her at all. She just seems, I don't really know. It's kind of a, see her as, like, a little hyper-energetic, I suppose. I see her as more energetic, where I see uh, Mugetsu as more uh, calm and stoic. Although, I don't really know if Gengetsu does anything. Aside from, like, exist with angel wings. Mmm. Mmm. If she agreed to pay half the rent, you, you would be typed to honor that. That's true. You know what? You're right. If you if you actually make an agreement ahead of time, 
then Yugi would be uh, the better choice. I still think she would be loud and, and very drink heavy. Oh, this is a good ass theme. I would have to be a little bit weary, because remember chat, I can only drink two cups of barely mixed rum with coke before I'm buzzed. If I had anything Yugi was having, I would probably just roll over. I wouldn't, I, <laughs> that would be it. That would honestly be it for me. Okay, now, now before I before I continue here, let me let me get let me let me clear up some let me clear up some problems with yams. All right, so yams, yams, she has manipulation over poisons and disease. However. It is an ability that she herself can use, and she does not like using it. So she probably wouldn't use it on me unless I really, really pissed her off. Alright? So that's one thing. That's one positive. Even though she is capable of, of that, she doesn't, doesn't mean she will. Okay? Number two. Yams is very good with construction work. So... The amount of DIY stuff she can handle is huge. She can do a lot of her own projects and sell them, and they would be really, really high high quality. Three, she's Yam. Now, that may not be a good reason to some, but like, come on, man. It's Yam. She did try to join the Myodan Temple Disciple because just to eat the humans that go there. Okay, well... Let me counteract that. She didn't expressly say that she wanted to eat the humans. She told Byakuden that she wanted to join because the humans that gather around there look tasty. And Byakuden was like, no thank you, please leave. But Yamame does, Yamame does not like using her, uh, her poison ability on people. Because it's, I guess it's just a hassle or something. But the denizens of the underground like her because she's very, uh, she's very efficient in her abilities. Also, she can make candy in my head cannon with her mouth. I'm not changing that. It's either made there or it's not made at all. Not poison viruses. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Point is, it's not just something like Hina where it, it you contract you contract it when you get close to her. She seems to have conscious decision whether or not you're affected by it. So I think I think I would actually want to live with the Yam. I would want to live with Yam. Would I want to live with her more than Lyrica? No. I don't think I would. But I don't... Yam is a little dangerous, but only if you really piss her off. That's my opinion. I would take Yam over Marasa. Unbiased streamer. I'm not biased. I was just listing Yam's good points. I still pick Lyrica anyway. Also, it's my stream, my sorter. Of course it's biased in it. <laughs> I mean, they don't know it's a bioweapon. Right? As long as she doesn't poison anyone. We're good. No, I'd rather live with Yam, because Yam would live at home. Luis and Sunny. Uh, Luis? Alright, now. There's not much about Luis that's known, except that she was taking a vacation. However, awesome holiday, Luis. Very rich. She works many jobs. She's also a gotcha addict. Gotta get her off that. But, she does work a lot of jobs. I could trust her. Sanyo or Suiko? Sanyo runs a gambling parlor. She's definitely well off. Although, she's gonna re make the entire uh, building smell like smoke. So... I don't think she's the choice here. She can definitely pay for herself, but she would also just kind of be a massive hassle. Because she would constantly be out. She would also... Not really a, a mob boss, but she's definitely probably got some muscle. You know? She would attract the IRS. Yeah, the smoking really kills it for me. I, I just... I hate smoking. So I gotta go with Swack. I would actually go with Sanyo over Flandre. I honestly would. I'd make sure they always have a window open. 
Renko or Tenshi? Now, Tenshi is good fortune. However, she's extremely bratty. Will not have a job. And since she's currently banished from heaven, she will not have any uh, inheritance from her father. Renko. Walking GPS. College student. Can work a part-time job while working towards a degree. Around my age. Probably pretty sociable. Good luck charm? Maybe not. Good hat, though. Tenchi's... Tenchi's a disaster. Tenchi is a walking disaster. Renko, on the other hand... Pretty... Pretty standard roommate, really. Aside from her, uh... Aside from her crazy GPS ability, she's pretty much just, like, a regular old person. Tenchi's peach hat would be good. Yeah, but Tenshi would be such a hard, uh, a hard character to deal with, right? Because, like, she would just do whatever she wants. She'd never listen. She'd never cooperate. And I would basically just be picking up after her, even though her fortune's really good. But then, of course, Shion would show up every now and again, and then I would just, like, you know, some real yes honey hours with the, the amount of misfortune I take it on that one. Oh, well, you know, this is basically a sorter, a regular sorter at this moment. Ben Ben or Yatsuhashi. So, both of these characters are basically the same. I don't know the, I don't actually know the differences between the instruments they play because they're not, uh, they're not instruments I'm familiar with. Based on the way they look, I would say Ben Ben is more mature. Ben Ben's also the older sister. And so this is basically you just saying I like Ben Ben more than Yatsuhashi. I'm not getting lectured, dude. Okay, but come on. Come on, it's a giant come on man, it's a giant robot. It's not a real roommate, but it's a giant robot. <laughs> On the other end, Misumaru. Misumaru is... I don't really know what she does. I actually don't know what she does. Every time I see her, I think she's a nurse because... I don't know. He would scare off any potential burglars and she's put up outside the entire building. She manages ancient treasures and mines. Oh, so she's boring. She's a jeweler. Oh, so she's boring. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I don't really like this character very much, but it's, it's kind of kind of better than living with a giant robot because a giant robot is a giant robot. <laughs> don't be mean. That's true. She might be boring. Every character might be boring. Fine, I'll live with I'll live with Grandma and her bling. All right. There's Shizuha. Shizuha or Unzan. Giant rope bot is not a real roommate. Shizuha Aki versus Unzan. So Shizuha. Um, I'm pretty sure she's more of the quiet type compared to Minoriko. She also only works. She only works during autumn. And that work won't actually bring in any money at all. But she could actually be a painter based on what she does. For her autumn leaves job. She paints all the leaves meticulously. So she could be a painter. Uh, Unzan, however. Once again, my cloud brother. But is my... Do I, do I go bros before Toho's here? What do I do? She'd be a Twitter artist and take commissions. No, she'd be a... Well, I mean, she could do that, but she would be a... She would be a traditional painter. She would be the Van Gogh of my time. Van Gogh, sorry. <laughs> I, I say Van Gogh now because of fucking Luigi's Mansion. I don't know. I, I have a feeling Minarik... I don't know how good Shizo's paintings would be, but the design on her, her leaves is really good. But it's really hard to make a living on that kind of thing, so... I don't know. Her title is the symbol of loneliness and death. 
Hey Enzon, you wanna play some uh wanna play some Mario Krat? Hey she is uh wanna play some Mario Krat? Koishi Komeiji. In other words, you live alone now. Or Udemy. Um I think I'd rather live with Cow Mom. Koishi, I don't really know if it constitutes his living with her. You know? She just kind of wanders and maybe she'll come home and I'll be like, Jesus, what are you, who are you? Wait, I remember you. You live here. And then she'll disappear from my sight and I'll be like, oh, shit. Urdami, on the other hand, yeah, she's she fishes. She's a fisher, fisherman. She's She has uh, maternal instincts. So she's probably good at housework and stuff. She can take care of Stone Babu. I wonder if she's a good cook. I would trust her to me, based on my own biases, of course. Doesn't have to pay rent, though. No, but when you're living in a two-bedroom apartment, you have to pay a two-bedroom apartment rent. So, if that's not being split 50-50, then why the fuck are we living in a two-bedroom apartment? She'll never pay her rent, so I'm not paying for the whole apartment here. Lara will forget to charge rent. Whose name would be on the lease? <laughs> Evil Eye Sogma. It's a tank. I didn't say Sigma. I didn't say Sigma. I said Sogma. Obviously Nazarin, for all the reasons listed prior. Tojiko. I'm not living with a giant eyeball in the room, alright? That's just fucking weird. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, um... Now... Oren would be an interesting character to live with. But unfortunately, I would find a lot of problems... Very early on. Hey Oren, where are you going? It's... It's 1am. With that wheelbarrow. Where are you going, Oren? But I know where she's going. And I dread the moment she comes back. Now here's the thing. Oren, Oren only steals corpses before they're buried. That is significantly harder to do than grave robbing. She's going to bring corpses into my house and then stick them in their, her room. And then I have to deal with Corpse stolen! Random chick with a wheelbarrow steals corpse, runs away. Hot pursuit. Thank you. Congratulations, and you brought them right to our fucking house. Now I have to explain why I live with a, a necromaniac. That's impossible. You could be a police informant for missing persons. No, 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 no. Because she steals dead people. She only steals dead people. She has to find them. But she only steals the ones that are in good enough condition, right? She's not gonna steal, like, bones and shit. Yeah, I know the underground is all social outcasts because they have elements to their character that are hated. Rins is pretty fucking clear. But it's Lauren! It's Cat! Cat girl! She can do no wrong! Until you get put on a watch list. She steals the mid-funeral. Yes, I know. I know what she does. <laughs> She's very conspicuous. And then ta Takane. Takane is an engineer and a businesswoman. She might be a little sassy, and I might accidentally step on her because she is apparently, like, less than an inch tall. So that's- that's a little dangerous. Gotta be careful with that. More businesswoman than an engineer. Well, look at the Kappas, right? The Kappas are both. The Kappas are both. I don't- I can't really say they lean one way or the other. But the Ma the Yamawaro are definitely the same. You wouldn't notice her, at least. True? I would just notice a- a pile of money. <laughs> Very tiny, very small. She would be fine. 
As long as you can deal with the sound of her working on something in her room, it's good. But again, I'm very patient when it comes to noises like that. She probably does airsoft on the weekends. Yeah, I could buy that. The Yamawaro actually do do stuff like that, though, in the mountains and canon. They have little uh, mock wars. The River Kappa don't, uh, the River Kappa don't do that, though. They don't have any, they don't have any bat fights like that. Reena not reenactments, but like, uh, Pagane would probably like, uh, paintball as well. Um, Chen does not have a job. But it's Chen. I wonder if she spins, like in real life. Hmm. She would be more of a pet than a roommate. Okay, but I'm not gonna tell her that. You wanna tell her that? <laughs> I don't wanna tell her that. <laughs> Start a cat cafe. The cats that she has actually don't really listen to her that well. She has trouble controlling the cats around her in general. I don't know if that's a fan and thing or not though. But she's also at the beck and call of Ron, so I think I'd rather choose Hakatia here. She's a Shikigami in training. Kudami or Chen? Uh. Hmm. Um. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Cat or vampire? These are both problematic choices. Yeah, Chen's still in training, so she's a bit of a hassle. Critomy, I don't know enough about. Yeah, I guess Critomy is technically a gatekeeper. So she would be good house security. Just don't fight me. Okay, well. Again. I don't really need to list Saki because she's a mob boss. And Rika, engineer, human, can make six stuff, uh, six stuff like flower tank and evil eye uh, Sogon. Sogon D's. So I would, I would hang out with Rika. Although I wouldn't understand anything she says, that's for sure. Yoma or Yuki? Yuki seems like she's got a good heart, but not much else. Yoma, however, has a good heart, and she has a job. <laughs> you know, that good heart's looking pretty good right now. Racing... Uh, would Racing enlist or some shit like that? There's no way she would build a giant tank in her room. She would probably buy a storage unit. Sick fire magic. Yeah, I know, but Raisa would be like, you know, I don't even, like, what does Raisa even do? She's pretty much just, yeah, in the army. Eating is done and settled. As long as she can cook it properly. But Yuki, like, I don't really know what she does. That also means Mai would show up a lot, and it would be kind of awkward. She was drafted. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know what Raisin does aside from complain. I gotta go with Yuki. Oh boy. Yuki likes Mai, but Mai doesn't like Yuki. Oh. That's kind of upsetting. Alright, Yuko and Komachi. Now, let's weigh the pros. Uh. Yuko? She doesn't really have a real job. Uh, she's dead. That's not really a pro. But that's, that, that's, that, none of those are pros. Never mind. Hold on. Okay, let me just simplify this. Yuko is literally a bottomless pit of hunger. So, your food bill will go up the wazoo and she will not be able to pay it. There is no benefit to living with this character. Komachi, on the other hand, has a job. Is fucking rich. Literally throws money as an attack. Money is no issue for her. 
What else do I need, really? They're both tall. So, takes care of that, too. Look, I don't want to live with... I don't want to live with Kirby. Alright? Dead 6 foot 5 Kirby. I don't want to live with that. I'm good. I'd rather live with her, or with Komachi, because even if Komachi sleeps in until like 2 p.m., I'll be like, you, you know, you got work, and then she works, she works the graveyard shift. Literally. And then she comes home, and then, you know, she can easily pay, and I can, I can just, you know, hang out with her in the dead time. There you go. Gotta deal with Aki. Aki's not gonna come to my house. Does your boss come to your house to tell you how work went? No, they don't. Aki's not gonna come to my house and lecture Komachi on her job. That's fucking weird. I'm gonna ask you where it is? Where she is? I'm gonna tell her she's at home. <laughs> she's not gonna lecture me. If Aki comes and drags Komachi to work, then whatever. It's not my business. It's hers. Okay. So, you may me, already all the benefits, established super genius at a young age, Shinky, goddess lady, goddess lady who can just make people, she just makes people, that's kind of weird when I say it like that. She doesn't have a job. I don't know how good she is at housework. Oh, jeez. Shinky, what the... What are you doing? Need a bigger house. That's fine. No. No, I don't think Shinky would be a good roommate. I've considered it. My favorite iteration of Shinky is the is the mom who's out of touch, but tries really hard to stay in touch. That's my favorite Shinky. <laughs> yeah, Shinky Shinky can make maids to do her work for her. She doesn't really lift a finger, so she's kind of a bad roommate. You made me on the other hand? I mean, well, first of all, it's you made me. One of the best characters in the entirety of PC98. Better than Shinky, mind you. So. That's already, you already got that going for you. And then on top of that, super genius. Ba boom boom. What does Kagero do? Does she have a job? I actually don't know what she does. It's not gonna eat me. She lives in the woods. I know that. Isn't she like a guide out of the, f the forest? But like Moko does that job, right? I thought she like guides trap. I know Moko does that, but I thought that she also does this. She just stays three classes for a living. So you're telling me all she does is shed on my couch once a month? That's it? What? What does she do? What is her job? The full moon changes her, yes. It also makes her a bit hairy. I'm not faulting her for that. I'm just trying to figure out here, like, what exactly does she do? Would she be information network? That's not a job, though. That's just, she's, you telling me she's a union worker? She could get a job? What's she good at? What is she good at? What does she do? Office job? What? Is that really better than Shinky though? Is she good with animals? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what she does. <laughs> a fisher? No. 
How could she go fishing when her friend is Wagasaki Hime? That's weird. A calm personality. Man! It's not, it's not enough information. A teacher? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe she could get a job? Yeah, she seems pretty fucking normal outside of the fact that she has wolf ears and she she goes a bit uh she goes a bit get a bit hairy on the full moon. Probably still better than Shanky because Shanky is uh you know, I just I just worry about her, you know? There's so many things that could happen with living with Shanky that I'm just I don't think I'm ready for any of it. That, that is not a- that this is not a question. Alright. She- <laughs> would just like her roommate she likes more despite you. She that mean? Alright, well, Shion is obviously no because Shion is a g good way to guarantee neither of you will be living in that house for much longer. Nui on the other hand, she's a bit of an oddball. Uh, I don't really know what she does in her spare time. But we could probably we could probably fake some uh, UFO sightings and uh, make some money on that. I guess <laughs> I don't know what the fuck Nui does at all. <laughs> I don't know. But she's obviously preferable to Shion. Thank you, Ajija, for the reason. <clears throat> she could work for the History Channel. Her occupation is undefined, unidentifiable. She's, yeah, she's a bit of a, she's a bit of a mischievous one. She doesn't go too overboard, but at the same time, it's just because we haven't seen much of her at all. She just sulks around the shrine and pranks. That's not work. That's still preferable to Shion, though. But that's not work. She might have a hard time getting to the door frame with those wings. Ellen or Sega. Alright, well... I can think of at least three reasons why I wouldn't want to live with Sega. Alright? At least three. She can go through any wall she wants. None of your valuables are safe. She has a strange fascination with the dead. And it wouldn't be surprising if she put my body on lease. For her own uses afterwards. No oh, thanks. No oh, thanks. Also, there are constantly, uh... There are constantly Kishin after her life. So that would really suck if I got caught in the crossfire. She's very dangerous. Ellen. I... Would... Do my very best. But I promise you... There is no human on this planet... Who could deal with Satori... In her entirety. It is so difficult because the brain is an asshole, all right? There's a reason when we think of things, we let them sit in there and then we process them and then we say them because sometimes your brain is just not feeling it, all right? Just don't think. I can't do that. Sometimes the brain just shit comes to your head and you and then she sees that and you're like what the what is wrong with you and it's like just 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 please listen the only way that I think you could have any real marginally like normal relationship with Satori is if you tell her and she understands that sometimes in the heat of the moment people think things they do not mean because they are emotionally driven. And just because they are the first thing they thought does not mean it is how they truly feel. All right? If she understood that, then I think we'd be, we'd be okay. But I have a feeling that she takes everything in the mind at face value and that results in her personality being a little bit not happy. But at the same time, she apparently doesn't, uh, she actually doesn't hate her ability. She thinks mind reading is awesome. 
But, surely she would understand that I don't think it would be awesome all the time. You have to come to a very specific understanding with this character if you want anything to work. But I still think it is incredibly difficult or borderline impossible for that to happen. Source. I've thought about this for a while because I like this character a lot. But that's my opinion. It's hard to have a relationship with this character because of the mind reading shtick. But if you can somehow develop a relationship even with that as a thing, you need, to, you, need, you need both parties to understand that sometimes things are thought when they're not meant. You know? Alright. Con and medicine. Well, you know, I'm not really looking to die day one. Medicine is literally possessed by the poison, the poison of the flowers of the area she was abandoned. She is autonomous due to poison. That poison is lethal. That is not good company. Kana, on the other hand, poltergeist. She also hates humans. Yeah, that's not a good thing either. Kotohime or show. Now listen. I know that Kotohime's rich. I know that she she could be a police officer. But show. Show. Avatar Beast of Mountain. Good fortune just by existing. Tall. Come on now. Come on now. There's, there's so many things there. So many things there. Kyoko or Larva? Hmm. Tall is a boon. It's a boon! Kyoko will do the housework. She has a job at the shrine. And she does morning exercises. She would be very, very loud. Look, she wouldn't, she, she would be loud, but I would, she would, you know, she would be like, it would be during times where people are awake anyway, and she wouldn't like scream. She has volume control. Larva, on the other hand, she hibernates. She's a fairy. She's a smart fairy, mind you, but she's still a fairy. I like, uh, I like Kyoko. I would take Kyoko. Kyoko would do chores. She would have, she would... She would contribute to money, and she would help me wake up in time. And she's also just adorable, so... <laughs> you know, that, 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 shouldn't, that shouldn't play a part, but like, come on. It's hard to stay mad at that when it wakes you up, even if you get real fucking cranky in the morning. I love this song. Because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a little penis music-y. Alright, uh, both of these will get me... Both of these characters will get me arrested for roughly similar reasons. Hmm. I think I'd rather... Look. Neither of these characters are going to, uh... What? Oh, that... Yep. I knew it. I knew it. Oh my god! It's a classic! I haven't heard this song in forever! Ooh, this is some nostalgia. Eka's based on a fortune god. One of the seven gods, yes, Izanagi and Izanami's child. I would take her because neither of these characters are paying rent anyway, but <clears throat> Eka, does, uh, Eka does have some fortune, good fortune on her side, and she's probably more livelier company than a uh, Yoshika. Oh, shit. Uh, there we go. Chiari or Miko? Hmm. Hmm. Well, Chiari's still in school, but she's a direct assistant to Yumeimi. Um, Miko, however, big leader, 
big leader lady. Uh, but she's only really interested in her own her own personal pursuit of uh, greatness. So I don't think it, I think it would be kind of hard to talk to her. I don't think she'd order you around, but I think she would attract trouble. The president. <laughs> you know what? She would be a she would be a political figure. She would 100% be a politician. And that would attract trouble. But I feel like it would be kind of hard to really like talk to her. She's she's kind of she's kind of out of my pay grade, so to speak. It would attract Aya. <laughs> no, I think I'd take Chiri. Because Chiri obviously has a... Chiri has a part-time position working with Yumeimi directly. So she obviously has some smarts to herself as well, so... I wouldn't mind it. She might be a little weird, though. She is a little weird. Wemmy or Sarah? Uh... Hmm... Sarah's a gatekeeper, I think, but uh, Remy is Remy, so Remy. I don't know. Sarah's only defining character is she's a gatekeeper between this world and the world of Makai, which means she's a demon and her purpose is solidified in that. I don't really think there's much else to her. I think I would rather talk to Ron, or at least try. Nemono or Kutaka? Nemono is a little bit scary. She's a little bit scary. I don't even know if she's actually gonna like pulp me, you know? Kutaka, on the other hand, she's friendly. Her ability is to cure sore throats, which, by the way, would be great for me. <laughs> she would forget me every other day. She can cook? Hell yeah, she can. She makes some simple, good-ass dishes, according to Lost Word. I would rather Kutaka because I feel like my life isn't in danger every day with Kutaka. Nemono, on the other hand, you know, she always carries around that big-ass machete. Little scary. I would have to avoid eating chicken. That is a problem. Chicken's really good. But that's okay. I'll just eat it when she's at work. She'll understand. She can produce her own eggs. It's a weird thought. I don't think I would eat her eggs. Notori or Aya? Now, Notori is the same benefits of... Uh, Takane. Oh wow, back to back. Back to back. I fixed it. She would, uh, you know, she's an engineer. All of her inventions are waterproof as well. And she's a businesswoman. Say exact same things with, uh, exact same issues with Takane. But Notori is also a friend of humans. I would, I would, I would pick Notori in this situation. Okay, well. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. See, okay. Iku? Iku's basically a weather reporter. All right. She is sick in the club. She dresses really nice. And she's pretty tall, all right? It's a lot of benefits. Okay? However, Lily White is Lily White. Although, what does she do? She flies around, announces spring, and then disappears. That's it. That's it. Also, Iku has manipulation of electricity, so that would be really helpful, too. Of course, Iku's not just gonna stick her finger in the outlet and create electricity. Iku, my friend. My friend! Quack or Kikuri? 
Okay, well, I guess this depends on your, uh, your interpretation of Quack. Cause, uh, you know, Quack, uh... Quack has a couple different, uh... Interpretations, you know? You know? I gotta wonder? She'll be, uh... She'll be busy at the library, yeah. My favorite quack is the, uh, the, the, the peaceful quack. The one that does her job diligently. Actually, that's a lie. Busy person quack is my favorite. Busy person quack is my favorite quack I've ever seen. She's got a great level of sass to her. Long hair or short hair? Uh, well, allow me to answer your question with another question. Which one's taller? There you go. Chicken farm. <laughs> True, she's got a family chicken farm. I think I can tolerate quack. Okay, okay. Okay. So, Mistia. Mistia. She likes to sing. Has her own food cart. Kind of forgetful. Kozuzu. Works at her family store. Can read anything. Sweetheart. Kozusu. Every day of the week. Every day of the week. All the trouble will stay at her bookstore. It won't follow her home. Tell her to keep all the books there. Keep all the books there. Don't open any of those fucking books in my house. Alright? She would cause more fortune tellers. No, 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 you can't... No, 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 no. <laughs> you can't just cause more fortune tellers. The fortune teller setup is a very elaborate one. I'm not even sure how many characters in the series even know how to do it. Mailing and Keiki. Well... Keiki is an artist. And mailing is everything else mentioned before. So... Mailing. <laughs> Keiki. Keiki would have a lot of strange things in her room. But... As long as she understands that I don't want to be a Haniwa, we should be okay. I hope she can sell them though. Okay. How do you live with either of these characters? What? How do I- how do I live with Junko? What does she do? Sakuna has the mallet. True, she has the Inchling's fortune, so she can pay. Kinda scary. I don't want to walk on her. I don't want to walk on her. She's really small, right? Like I'd have to, I'd have to adjust everything in the house to like fit her size. Junko doesn't really do anything, is the thing. Like she just kind of, she just kind of exists, I guess, until the time comes for her to uh, yell at the moon. I, I would go with Sakuna. Sakuna would be a little bit of management, but I, I don't think anyone would want to live with Junko. It's way too hard. Sekibanki and Alice. Okay, Sekibanki, I'm pretty sure, actually lives in the human village. But apparently she has a very standoffish attitude towards others. In other words, she's kind of a prick for no real reason. And there's not much else to her character besides that. So, you know... If I shout, get a job, she'll just sass me. And then she will continue to have not a job. Dormi? Dormi has a job. Did you know that? Chat, did you know that Dormi sells pillows in the human village? She has a job. Okay. 
Well, here's the thing. Suika, love her to death. She's a freeloader. She's a drunk. I don't know if I can trust her to do enough like work around the world <laughs> to like pay, you know? On one hand, infinite alcohol. On the other, it's low quality. Uh, and I have probably have to pay for the food bill and all the parties she throws. I'd hang out with her. I wouldn't live with her. Biakuden, on the other hand, perfect person. Perfect. All right. She'll never complain about anything. She's probably as good at her household uh, household chores. She'll cover her side of the rent, and I will have no qualms like helping her out. Because she is very, very patient lady. Easy. And she's tall. There you go. All the reasons. They all... They all come back in. Maribel and Futo? I would choose Futo. Biakana will make you do everything. No, 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 no. I don't... I don't follow the, the path of Buddhism. I'm not gonna do everything for her. But she can't disguise it as training. She's gonna do her own goddamn work. Or she'll have someone else come in and do the work for me, in which case, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. She won't criticize everything I do. No. Futo or Maribel? Maribel is, uh. dangerous, I suppose. So much shit could just go wrong with her. What if she just disappears one day? Like, I, I, she just, she just, you know, she just black mirrors herself. Then what the fuck do I do? How do I explain that to the landlord? I'll take my chances with Futo. I'll take my chances with Maribel. Okay. <clears throat> Kokoro or Raisin? Kokoro is learning emotions. She puts on her Mendereki the performances. She's a bit of an oddball. And uh, Bunny. So here's a here's a cool Bunny fact. Grayson actually developed her own little uh, item that she sold in the human village. It was I believe it was a little wooden cat that was designed to repel mice from the ha uh, houses. And she made it herself to sell. Uh, aside the, alongside the medicine that she peddles for Aiden. So, Raisin has a job. Obviously, Raisin has a job. She also is capable of making her own products as well, which is good. Uh, she may be... She may try to be a little bit of a control freak. Because she likes, uh, she kind of likes to be in charge. But I can deal with that. I like this theme. I think Raisin would be bearable. She, she kind of fits all the criteria. She wouldn't be impossible to talk to because she's not really stuck up, even though she's an ex-moon rabbit. But I think she might have a little bit of sass in her body. Mike and Hat. Oh well. Raisin might think bad things about you like an AOCF, but she'd be nice anyways. Well, remember, the Dream World characters are uh, exaggerations of their inner feelings. So, while Dream, Dream Racing definitely said a lot, it was mostly just built up, for, uh, pent up frustration from the way she's treated constantly, right? Like, I'm not gonna treat her like a slave driver. So, even if she, even if she wants to talk shit, like, whatever. Doesn't really matter that much, as long as we get along well enough. I like, I like to think that it's just her pent up frustration from the way she's constantly treated by others. But, you know. I'm trying to avoid treating her like that because it's not a very good feeling. Anyway, uh, Hat. Hat runs her own thing with her special power, but she never leaves her goddamn house, and it's weird. And she talks like a teenager, according to translation for Double Focus. On the other hand, Lucky Cat. Every time I click that, it happens. Uh, I'll take the shut-in journalist. Okay, well, Rumia, don't, don't ever, 
Don't ever live with Rumia. <laughs> Rumia is a hungry child who may or may not bite you. Alright? Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Sakuya, on the other hand, you know, she's very good at her job. And she's a maid. Which is her job. So she's very good at being a maid. Patchier. Okay, well. Here, here's, here's, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Wagazaki Hime is a mermaid. So she either lives in my tub. Or I convert her entire room into a pool. That's hard. That's a lot of money. She can't leave the pool either, because she's a she's a mermaid. She doesn't do anything. She just exists. Patchy on the other hand, certified academic. I already figured that one out. I'll take the dancer. Lunasa and Rikako. Rikako is a scientist, smart lady. She's probably pretty tall. Lunasa. Lunas is actually dangerous, chat, because her music is... Her music is actually quite dangerous to the human uh, spirit without being... Uh, without being mediated by Lyrica. So her solo performances are a little worrisome. So I wouldn't want to live with her. Mioi and Rinosuke. No, that's not Aku's lies. That's actually the power of their abilities. Aki wouldn't lie about something like that. Aki makes educated guesses and her own uh, her own gospel for sure on things, but and she does exaggerate. She exaggerates the abilities of certain yokai to make them more appear scarier to humans. But there's no way that even though it's by her, from her perception that they're just flat out lies on their abilities. Their performances obviously have effect on people. Rinosuke, he runs his own shop. He's a big guy. Talks a lot. Super curious. But Mioi is good luck. However, Rinosuke is tall. Tear Oku. <laughs> Tay, give me the good luck. Free heating. Mmm. I don't know. I don't know. He's really good at fortune telling. Hmm. <laughs> Death flag, though. Yes, his fortune telling is phenomenal. That's why his ability worked. Didn't you read? Didn't you read the manga? The whole reason the fortune teller came back was because his fortune telling was so goddamn good. But he also scribbled in gibberish in the book. So when, when Kozuzu started using his fortune telling and was getting really good with it, she left out the scribble bits, which fueled the vengeance, uh, which, uh, which allowed him to return to the surface. And he managed to retain his sanity and his emotions and all that while he was waiting for that to happen the entire time. The fortune teller is one badass motherfucker. He just kind of got brained by Reimu really quickly. Like he's actually a really interesting character. When you think about how it kind of how he kind of came to be who he was, but he got brained by Reimu. Call that good fortune? Look, no one said he fortune tellers don't tell their own fortune. They tell other people's fortunes. That's all. Orange, on the other hand, I don't know what she does. She's just a baton twirler. What does she do? He broke a rule, yes. He became a specific type of yokai that is against the rules. A human of the human village becoming a yokai is forbidden. Because essentially they stand that they have too much knowledge of the way the uh, of Gensokyo works. He basically got secret serviced. Because if a human of the human village learns the truth of the world and becomes a yokai, then, like, he becomes- he immediately becomes a danger to the entirety of Gensokyo as a whole. That's why he got brained. 
Even though he said he would never, he was just interested in his own, uh, his own, or, like, ordeals, and he was just gonna leave. Raven was like, I can't let you do that, Star Fox. And then, psh. So what the fuck does, uh, Orange do? Like, <laughs> what does Orange do? I, t I don't know what she does. If that rule is constantly broken against Tokyo wouldn't exist. That's the point, right? That's why she's so. That's why she's so specific about that one. It's because if that one was like left unchecked, then Gensokyo Gensokyo ceases to be as soon as humans stop fearing the yokai, and that includes having a power to rally with or the humans learning the truth through one way or another, right? Hmm. You know what? I think I think I'd rather talk to Orange than the fortune teller. Just a bit. I think Kaneko over Satan. Mm. Take Satan over Megumu. Take Megumu over Kasume. <laughs> Fuck, man. I don't know. <laughs> Do I want to? live with a jealous curse or do I want to like feed the bucket <laughs> Kasume is going to kill me they're both bad but one of them has to be worse than the other <laughs> you kind of get fucked no matter what on this one huh um. You know what? Kasume might be more tolerable. Because all I have to do is throw her some food every now and again. The, neither of them are going to pay rent, unfortunately. So there's no way out of that one. But Parsi is going to make... Yeah, Parsi's just going to be a miserable time. Kasume, as, as long as I feed her, I should be okay. Eden and Ichiden. Eden. Each in and over Luna. I take Satono over that. I still don't really know what Konga like is or does, but I also think she's like 20 feet tall, so that's not a good thing for characters. So I guess I would, I guess I would take up the chestnut mouth. Made her Narumi. Narumi. Okinara Meta. I really don't want to live with Okina. She she scares me. All right. The better god, of course. Oh, come on, man. That's not fair. <laughs> no choice on that one. I would rather live with Okina than a fucking ICBM. Okina scares me, just a little bit. Momiji? I would take Momiji over Ellie. They kind of fit similar roles, but... Uh... I guess Momiji would probably be easier to walk around in public, because Ellie wants to walk around the goddamn scythe, and she's dressed in the fucking Victorian air at the same time. Momiji also has extreme clairvoyance, so she's better at her job anyway. Mai's kind of mean. I don't like Mai. She's a mean girl. I, I, I'd rather live with. I'd rather. I'd rather live with Sario. You know what? Shave dice isn't so bad. Minariko or Dayose? I don't want to live with a mean girl, cause she's a she's an asshole. Even if she does have ice powers. Oh, my favorite. It's my favorite mix of spaghetti. Minariko or Dayose? Again, Dayose, as far as the fairies go, is the best choice, but Minariko is top tier. Ellie or Dayose? I'm more confident in Dayose's abilities than Ellie's. I don't want to live on the moon. 
You can't honestly believe I want to live with a giant catfish more than I live on the moon, right? Right? There's no way! <laughs> Imagine the smell. Look. The government man fears the indoor catfish farmer. It's free food? I'm not gonna eat the bastard! He's probably gonna eat me. <laughs> He's huge. What does the great catfish do? What does he do? Honestly, I'd go fish, but I can't draw a card though. Sorry. I don't have any cards here. The great catfish can be summoned by Tenshi, apparently. And in Mailing's dreams. Look, I I just I just don't think a catfish is a good a good pick. Ringo or Star? Ringo. Star or Kane? Kane. Kassen or Star? I would have to go with Star. I just can't imagine Kassen being a very fun person to live with. Well, now I don't have a choice! Oh, well, it's an easy choice. I don't want to live with Yukari. Do I pick the 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 what the one end of the spectrum or the other? <laughs> I gotta weigh the pros and cons. Okay, uh, maybe Yukari would be better because uh, Raymo can at least. No, but like, Raymond may not be a supernatural bad roommate, but she's still a little more than a mundane bad roommate. It's a good luck charm. Mm. Mm. This is the theme that plays when you wait on the uh, Toa Soccer before starting the game, where Renosuke starts talking. Raymo has a job. You know what? Raymo would serve me tea and wouldn't steal my, uh, steal my cookies. Maybe. Raymo would not take my money. I hope. But Yukari is like, hella dangerous. I, I think I'd rather risk Raymo than Yukari. Letty or Riggle? Letty. Mocha or Riggle? I gotta pick Riggle. Or do I? Hmm. 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 Remember, Riggle controls bugs, has a bug-related delivery service, and... She's a beekeeper now, which means she gets honey and creates more bees. What does Moko do? She gets sad a lot and then turns the AC all the way down to zero so she can be cold and miserable. I'm not trying to be cold and miserable, Moko. Maybe, maybe just buy a mini fridge or some shit. Open it in your room. Leave me out of the equation. Well, you're still better than that, though. Oh my god! 
Well, the maid robot sucks, and the other one, I guess I could buy her a book and get her to leave me alone for a little bit. Yumeko or Sanai? <laughs> I'd rather live with Sanai. Kaguya or Yumeko? You know what? This is just my bias talking, but I think Kaguya would be fun to live with. But only for a certain extent of time. It might get annoying really fucking fast. Hard to say for sure. Kogasa, easily. Kogasa might be like top three in the entirety of this uh, cast for this. Raiko or Mugetsu? Raiko. Merlin or Mugetsu? Uh... Uh... I would say Mugetsu. I think Lyrica would be the only Prism River who would be acceptable to live with on their own, just because of the nature of their abilities. Well! Merlin it is! Yuka or On? Mm. Honestly? I would give this to Yuka. I think I would give this to Yuka. Let's, okay, think about it, think about it. So, On's very helpful, right? She does, ha she's very helpful. She can be in two places at once, and she has your best interests in mind because that's the way she, that's, that's the kind of girl she is. Yuka, on the other hand, very strong. So, uh, she has her own business as well. She's very good at gardening and flower keeping and all that stuff. She can handle herself like that, right? The thing is, I'm not into that CBT nonsense. Yuka's scary. You know what? I take it back. Now that I'm now that I'm putting these out, both of these characters have pros, but Yuka has a bit of eggshells. On has no eggshells. She is just the perfect girl. So on. Once I once I talked it out, I realized I realized how I felt. That's all. However, Yuka's still better than Sumireko. That's my homie right there. Living alone is preferable to the alternative. Um, Lyrica or Yugi? Yugi scares me a little bit, as stated earlier. See, I think Lyrica could be fun because she can solo practice, but she'll still have the band over and to practice as well, and I don't really mind that. And then you can kind of get to know all of them. So I would rather, I would rather live with Lyrica. Now, all right. I'd rather live with Yam. Yugi. I'd pick Marasa just because I have more uh, knowledge of what she would be like, what she does. Frog or Luis? Luis because she's rich. Sunny Milk or Suiko. Um, I think Subaco. Sonia or Sunny? Mm. Gotta do something about that smoking, but Sonia does have, uh, does make money. Sunny. Ben Ben or Renko? Okay, well. This one is, uh, again, Renko has, uh, Renko's pretty, pretty standard, aside from her ability. Ben Ben, not a standard, but her music is good. Her music is good, her instrument is nice, and her, her personality is calm and mature. 
And she does have, uh, she does have a job. Hmm. So. I would like Ben Ben. I would take her sister as well. I mean, they probably hang out a lot. Take Renko over Aki. This seems like a dysfunctional household, no matter which one I click. Game over. <laughs> nice. So, Aki would be very difficult to live with. And she wouldn't be home very often anyway. So that would be fun. Tenshi, on the other hand, she's incredibly good fortune. I can eat the peaches on her hat, but she's also incredibly bratty and it would be incredibly difficult to like actually like do anything with. I just have a playlist. I have a playlist of all the OSTs and a bunch of fan games I've played. But the, the playlist is like 1300 songs big and about 75 hours total of music. It's all music that doesn't get content claimed, so that's why I, I use it specifically. Because sometimes I'm not allowed to mute things on the bot for some reason. Seventy-five hours. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna break soon. I'm gonna break at a uh, battle two hundred. All right. Remind me, chat. Battle two hundred is where we break. I'm gonna go with. I want to believe that Tenshi's good fortune would cancel out her awful behavior. I would take Unzan. Mm. Nope, this is platonic relationship. You can't just you can't just walk up to a character and then marry them. That's not how this works. That's not how the real world works. You said Unzan and Misamaro. Yeah, I give it to Unzan because Unzan is better. She's a higher Misamaro. I I don't want to talk to Jeweler Grandma. I really don't. Doesn't interest me. I think she's a. Ah, uh, tell me about those jewels, Grandma. Oh, what a giant fucking robot! With a name like that, you definitely don't have any common sense in the real world. So that's how I knew. Chat, do I go to the moon, or do I take a robot? Well, I mean, I don't know why I asked you. <laughs> Fucking giant robot all the way. What did I pick for, uh, what did I pick for, for catfish? I picked Yorahime. I can't, I can't. Chot, I can't. I, I can't live with a robot. It's not a real person. Who's in the robot? Also, Hiso Tensoku is technically a balloon, isn't it? So. The robot is the house rather than the roommate. <laughs> Oh, I get it. It's like you put a comma between it. It's not a roommate. It's your room, Mike. I get it. It's funny. I get it. Off to the moon we go. Nazarin or Udemy? Nazarin. Nazarin. Tojiko? Udemy. Tojiko versus the one you're gonna forget <laughs> every single time. Man, <laughs> come on, that's not fair. Nazar can find whatever she wants. I don't need to find change in the couch cushions. I can just ask her to find find some real good shit. Get some of that good shit. There we go. We're eat we're eating like kings tonight. I'll buy her the nicest cheese in town. I I guess I have to live with uh, the forgotten signature on the lease. Takati or Takane? Takane. I'm not living with a. I'm not living with a criminal. I'll live with a Kudami though. 
Oh, this is a cat battle. The thing is, Rin is not a good roommate. Anyone who tries to tell you that Rin would be a good roommate is very clearly ignoring the fact that she is a uh, daylight grave robber who robs the corpses before they enter the grave. Alright? Yomo Arika. Uh, Arika's good. Rika's, Rika's a smart girl, but that's, like, Yomu's also Yomu, and she's got, like, a goose, and she's a gardener, and I like Yum. There you go. Yuki, Rika. Saki, not on your life sport. <laughs> oh, hmm. Yumemi or Komachi? These are the same character. Ooh, ooh, chat's kind of split on this one, huh? Komachi's rich. Remember, Komachi's rich. She works her job. She probably sleeps in a lot. You made me? Genius. Well, I guess she's currently not a professor because her whole magic theory got her laughed out of the academy. You made me will eventually become Rick. Become Rick. You know, I should ban you for saying that, but I can't- I also can't, like, completely... Disagree with that statement, because there's some truth in it. There is a single kernel of the popcorn bag of truth in there, and that is why you are not banned. But you're on thin ice. Alright? Better fucking watch it. I- I, like, you know, I like you maybe more. I- Komachi is, a uh, Komachi also just enjoys talking to people. In general, so she's probably uh, <laughs> she's probably a lot of fun to talk to, and she does again. She does do her job. She's obviously well off, and like it's just it would just be having a nice roommate. That's no that's a no brainer. Shit, I have to use my brain here. Electric Heritage. Some people dare call this track better than Idolize the World, and to that I say. Well, your choice. But I like uh, idolize, idolize the world better. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter, for gifting a sub. Mm. See, I would have to base this on the fact that Kagero could at least probably get a job, and Yuko is never going to get a job, and she's going to eat me into the uh, the red. Not good. Okay. Fine. Give me murder, death, mom, grand, god, lady, demon. Alan. Stinky? Oh no. You gotta watch who you say that to. <laughs> That's a bannable offense in some places. Not here, though. New. Yeah. I already mentioned how I feel about Satori earlier. But it's a, it's a hard thing to con commit to. But I don't really know what New does. That didn't work. There we go. This is one of those examples. The word stinky makes me shiver knowing what Dylan's capable of. Is that so? Is that so? Hmm. 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 You won't? Alright, I won't. I won't. Satori. Oh my god. Ah! Uh, Alright. Let me see. It's Battle 200. I know. I know. But I guess I should finish it on this one, because this is a pretty good one, huh? Let's see. Sega or Shion? Hmm. I wonder, who should I pick between these two? I, I mean, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Saw the mouse leave the screen? You didn't see nothing. You didn't see nothing! Sega is better than Xion because Xion is not a good time. 
Not it's not her fault though. It's not her fault. But Sega's like Jesus, just stay in your room and stay out of mine, alright? Alright, we're gonna stop here. You make click load progress after this resumes or use this URL. Okay. Alright, chat. Progress has been saved. Um or is my display capture now? And this is where I'm going to stop. Chat, it's been three hours and I'm 27% through this. This was not a quick one, huh? All right. Cool. Electric Heritage is just about the end. What was up next? Pulse of the World. And then Magus Knights. But ultimately, I will end off with this. Ah, 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 ah. Whoops! Three hours later and I am only a fourth of the way done. I will return to that at a later date for sure. Probably next Saturday. Got a quite a quite a few things going on now. Luna Knights is going pretty fast to be honest with you. I kind of thought that would be take longer, but the bosses will be uh, They'll give me some trouble for sure. I will do uh, I will pick up where I left off as well. It should go a little bit faster as well, just reiterating some of the points. But this is uh, definitely a fun thing to do, even though it's incredibly stupid. But that's, you know, that's part of the fun, really. So, you know, I'll pick up where I left off next time when I get the chance, and we'll see if I can conclude it at that point. Probably not, but a lot of the conversation parts have kind of been covered with individual characters, so we can definitely start, uh, definitely start moving through it all. I suppose.